You heard me, little man? I see everything you do, boy. See, I was going to come back and mind my business, brother. But you down there in that little comment section, whining like a little baby talking about the immortal. Clay Thompson trying to take sneak shots at your boy when I'm trying to be friendly. But since you want to be my enemy, <laughs> okay, let's go, Ron. Y'all already know what happened. Actually, first, welcome to the panel. Shout out to everybody that's here early. Y'all know we're not going to play today. We're getting straight into it. The Heat and the 76ers in the playing tournament. Talk to me about this game. Hmm. I'll start the conversation, sure. So the adjustment that Coach Nick Nurse made was crucial in the second half because in the first half, what Nick Nurse did was he basically bit the style of 1990s UNLV. They had this thing in, in they had this thing called the amoeba defense. And it was a zone where on the weak side of the zone you had a Roma where they trapped in the short corner and they trapped hard in the corner. In the short corner, and then they trapped hard in the corner. Philly didn't have any answer for it early because they had both Kyle Lowry and but not Buddy Hill, I'm sorry, Kyle Lowry and I believe it was Kelly, not Kyle Lowry and Maxie at the top. And Joel Embiid is standing out at the top. And they basically got three guys on the wing. That's not helping this offense at all. There's no movement. There's nobody penetrating the offense. Oh, everybody's just standing around. They go into the halftime and they end up making the adjustment where now Maxie has the ball and he's getting downhill. They still got Joel Embiid in the middle of the zone. But now you got your zone busters in both Buddy Hill and Nick Batum, who came out of nowhere, to now bust the zone open. It expands the zone. Joel Embiid is wide open in the middle of the zone. And now they can play basketball. So that was a coaching adjustment that Nick Nurse made. That was that, that was thumbs up. I'm not sure that there's a bunch of other people who can make that. I'm not sure that there's a bunch of other people who can make that, that adjustment. He did make that adjustment. Jimmy Butler ended up getting hurt. This sinks Miami. I said to you yesterday that I feel like there's a world where the Miami Heat missed the playoffs. Not like this, though. I didn't see Jimmy Butler getting hurt, but I thought that by the way that they played, because Miami's offense is whack. I'm going to be honest with you. Miami's offense is whack. There's nothing good about their offense. Last night, the majority of their offense came from steals. The majority of their offense came from turnovers and transition. Their half-court offense is whack. They don't really well, get their offense, I disagree. You said half-court offense, offense is whack. Well, 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 let the, well, let, well, let the final boss explain why. Uh, their offense is not whack. It's just that they don't make shots. Simple as that. When they make shots, you see the ass whooping like they put on the Boston Celtics last year happen. When they don't make shots, you think the offense is whack. So the offense isn't whack. It's just that they didn't make shots. Look at Tyler Hero last night. Look at what he shot from the field. Right. He was getting looks. He right. either was missing it or he was right. getting it blocked. Right. Look at Jimmy Butler. Which would make their offense whack looks. last night. Which he would make their offense whack. Which would he make the offense whack last night. He was say that action. Look. Don't but, say no. Let me say, but let me. The final boss didn't cut no you ticket. off. No The final boss did not yes, cut you off. You absolutely did. I wasn't done. Yes, you did. I wasn't done. Yes, you did. I wasn't done. The final boss did not cut you off. Yes, you did. I wasn't done. You what I was saying. You've been well. I wasn't. You've been well. So again, again. So say yes, you did. So once again, my my point is. Say that that say that those guys would don't say that their offense. No, was you whack. said the offense was whack. If the I offense was agree. whack, and why I was the offense the whole, whack? I think that the play is whack. What I mean is guys are not making shots. For example, the offense looks better when you had Kevin Love in the game hitting threes. When you have uh other the other guys that was in the corner last night, the they scored Martin, 51 points shots. at the half. Take it, you have, it off, man. Excuse me, 51 sir. points. Once again, once 51 again, points. Say this, once and, again, and, and almost 20 of them came off a turnover. The game would have been a blowout. The game would have been, 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 been a blowout. The game would have been a blowout if Miami makes shots. My, the problem with Miami is they don't make shots. They get shots. They don't make shots. Well, Look at this. Right. Hold on. That is the reason why. They stay putting a stump in a mud hole in your Boston Celtics ass and walking it dry every playoff. Because when they get hold on, Shut up, hold on to quiet. Your when the they get Celtics to the playoffs, when they quiet. get to the playoffs, stop bringing that up. When they get to the playoffs, stop bringing that up. The Celtics let them finish. Let them finish. When they get to the playoffs, the offense does not change. 
What changes this is they make shots. Go look it up. They're getting the same shots. Is the make and miss lead. During the regular season, they were one of the worst shooting teams last year. During the postseason, they're one of the best three-point shooting teams. So it's amazing. So the offense isn't whack. The players are whack because they're not making shots during the regular season when they need to. So the case of – and then here's the thing. Here's here's one last thing. Kids do away with this playing stuff. Top eight teams in, the rest of them bums out. Because if you play a whole season and you get to an eighth seed, and now I got to (laughs) play against bums just to keep – when I'm six, seven, eight, nine games better than you, that doesn't make any damn sense whatsoever. If we didn't have this, you don't have Jimmy Butler getting hurt. You don't have all this foolishness going on. You don't have teams ducking and trying to play teams. And you don't have the stuff that's going on now where the NBA has lost not only Zion Williamson, but Jimmy Butler and back-to-back nights. Now, put that in your pipe, old man. Don't forget about don't don't forget, don't, don't forget hey, about Swiper, the Russo. Hey, Swiper, I come to get you Russo back should have been because in Cancun I heard, already. Swiper, that you've been dealing with this bullshit for a long time now. So let's get it. Don't forget about don't forget about Caruso ticket. Don't leave him out and how important he is to Chicago. But they shouldn't even been in it. They shouldn't even been in it. No question about the, that. No, I'm but, saying the Miami Heat last night, they would have ran away with that game. That game, they was already up like they shouldn't stuff. have had to play and that game. But That's the point. It, but I heard everything that you just said. My point everything. is this: if he, you're saying the offense is whack, it was. I disagree. It it's was. the players it not was. making shots because the, Miami runs the same offense in the playoffs. And for some reason, every single year they make shots in the postseason. They don't during the regular season. That's the difference, bro. And so you got to blame that on the players, on the lack of attention, lack of detail, lack of execution. You can't okay, blame it on Eric Spoelstra. So, 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 ticket. Explain why. Explain why their offense has been at the bottom of the league the last two years. Because I just told you. Because these fools don't take it serious until postseason play, and that bites them in the ass. Well, in, in, you, injuries, it, injuries too, to be fair. They had 30 okay, okay. Sure. So, so, la- so last year, the injuries logic doesn't work because Bam played 78 games. Um, Tyler Hero, Tyler Hero, he got hurt in the playoffs. He ended up getting hurt. But in the regular season, I believe he played over 60 games. Kyle Lowry played over 60 games. Max Struess played 70-plus games. Um, Jimmy Butler played 62 games. They played plenty of games. So the I idea, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy, Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler averages over 60, 62 games, I believe, 64 games for 10 years. So the injury logic, I'm not buying that. So in the regular season, this team, the reason why they are what they are during the regular season is because of their defense. So in 19, so in 2022, when they lost to the Boston Celtics, they had the number one defense in the league. But Jimmy number one hurt. defense. But in the Jimmy league. got hurt though, chill. That even, was the difference. Even if even if Jimmy Butler, he wasn't hurt in Game Seven. But he, he, but he was. He but remember, he was hurt. He was, he was hurt earlier in the series, though. Remember, he was hurt earlier in the series. But most, and he was most still of those guys hurt in Game up. Seven, though. But he most was still those guys are beat up. So was no, Joel. No, no, Joel but Embiid. It but it wasn't. Joel Embiid was hurt last night too. No, no, no. Joel but Joel, it wasn't. It wasn't just just a small injury though. Jimmy legitimately was hampered for the rest of the series. I'm not making excuses. I'm just saying what happened. Right. Same thing with Tatum in Game Seven when he turned his ankle. Right. The same thing with Jimmy Butler the year before. He had an injury that stayed with him throughout the entirety of that series, and then it affected him as a driver and shooter the rest of the time. Remember, going into that series, I want to say Jimmy was averaging like 27, like on a 65 true shooting. He was killing everybody. And then he had that injury happen. He still played well, but he wasn't the same Jimmy Butler. And again, then the next year, the same thing happened with Tatum. But the difference with the Celtics and the Heat series, the, the Heat never should let the Celtics get back in that series. They never should have been. And the only reason they stayed in that series because Derek White hit that game winner on the, on the left of box out from Miami. So even with that, like they could have got him out there in six. And then, but to the, the point this year, the Heat never should have been in the play-in. But Shield, you know why they were in the play-in? Because they lost seven straight games for no reason this year. And it wasn't like they were playing versus elite competition. It was obviously the fact that they had 32 different starting lineups this year. But to your point, they don't take the regular seat in this series as they need to. But I think a lot of that is because their best star is 34, 35 years old. They're managing injuries. Tyler Hero is kind of oscillating back and forth. He's been in and out of the lineup. Bam out of bio is not going to carry you offensively. They added Terry Rozier. They added DeLon Wright. They're adding Jaime Hawkins Jr. They have rookies in rotation. And they just don't have, like, the kind of roster that gives you 55 wins every year in the regular season. But – because of coaching, because of their experience, because of their top-end talent. When they get into the playoffs, the reason they're able to hunt you down is because they have all the ingredients necessary, including the defense that you talked about, Chill, and that zone they run, that you're able to stifle you on the half court. And yesterday, honestly, the only reason that the 76ers won is because Nicholas Batum decided to throw the clock back six years ago. That's it. I mean, that was the reason. that Them three-pointers he hit, Chill, changed the game. 
Now, some of that is Embiid. I argue, I think for me, this is not the playoffs, but I'll, I'll, count, I'll count it as a part of the playoffs. It, that was Embiid's best fourth quarter performance I think I've ever seen from him in a playoff setting. Because remember, the playoffs offensive so rebounds that he was getting, the open three-pointer that he hit, and then the and one, the and one that he completed Go off two. the rebound. Crucial, and that helped him swing the game. So Batum, Embiid wasn't good over a majority of the game. The last four shots from Embiid, and then the fact that Jimmy Butler obviously was hampered down the stretch of that game, all that led to the 76ers winning. So, But again, they shouldn't have been in that situation. And if you ask Heat fans, I'll tell you, that seven-game losing streak cost them the fifth seed. And then Costing he lied the about the injuries, uh, bro. He lied about the injuries. For example, for Bam, for the five years he's played in Miami, this year he played 60 games. Last year he played 64. The game, year before that he played 57. The year before that he played 52. And the first year he played 58. So he's never played over 65 games as a Miami Heat. So if you got your key guy missing damn near 20 games a year, Teal Town, and you're still winning 45, 46, 47 games, imagine. What are you talking about? Last year he played 71 games. Last year he played 75 games. Hold on, hold on. 75 games he played last season. What are you talking about? My brother, my brother, it goes to the point of what the brother quite was said about injuries and what I try to say to you. The injuries are the injuries are major. The injuries are major because you know you don't have a consistent lineup. As a coach, you're rotating and changing lineups because your key guy is hurt. Your key guy is in and out of the lineup. When you're missing 20 or more games a season, that does affect you. So how many games did the Heat win this year, Chill Town? I think 40. Three or something like 44. Yeah, that's, a, that's unexacceptable. Right. They so if you miss what, what is it? 40, what, what is it? Right. So if Jimmy Butler missed 22 yeah, of those 20, games, 20, games, how many more games do you think Jimmy's worth? If they win 50 they're not in that situation. Right. How many more games do you think Jimmy's worth if he's playing? And, and chill town. You are misconstruing bad shooting, bad production versus bad offense. The offense isn't bad because it looks great once they get to the playoffs because guys are actually hitting shots. The problem Jake, is, like the brother right. said, these guys don't take it as serious as they should until the playoffs, and that's their problem. And, and that's the same, the same problem with the players is the problem with Pat Riley. He hasn't taken it as serious as he needs to because now, here's the thing, you can get by with that shit in the Eastern Conference, but once you get to the finals, once you play those big dogs and you don't have enough guns, you don't have the same type of artillery that this other side got, that the West side got, now that's when you run into major problems because Jimmy has – gassed out from those three weeks of trying to do everything he can do to get them to that point. Bam! Isn't on the same level as whatever big is coming out the West at that time, whether it be Jokic or whether it be AD or whoever is going to be coming out the West. So that's their, pro that's their real problem. So if you look at it, look at the percentages last night. Look what Jimmy Butler shot from the field. Look what oh, Tyler you. Hero shot from the field. Six so don't say, don't say, hey, man, the like offense is whack. Them guys ain't making shots. Six for 24, I think right. Tyler Hero was. Something like that. Five for 18 oh, for Buckets. and Ox, I'm glad you came in here, Ox, because I want to make a little announcement real quick. Jalen, I know you're somewhere around here dancing and waiting for your money. You're not oh. getting your money until Ox pay me my money. Period. Mm. <laughs> and Ox, let me guess. Hey, look, He's not getting his Ox, money until Pirate pays you your money. And chill, Tim. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm asking you. I already, I already, I already asked you how, how I get it to you. I already told no, you. I'm not, my I'm not even tripping. It's just a couple dollars. You know what I'm saying? I got you, but um, but to to add Jalen into that, that's just that's that's pitiful. That's spying. That's not pitiful. That's not pitiful. I can't believe I've already got that's how you I've already got all of that. One bet over here. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Look at look at these look at these two double men twins right here. Look at that stacked on top of each other. You got Twiddle D and Twiddle Dub stacked on top of each other. Thing one and thing two. Look at these niggas, man. Hey, they, they one in the same. That's the same person right there. Hey, but no, nah, right, look, so. look, look. Now I got your money though. Take it, don't even trip. You know, in the bylaws, it say I don't got to pay until with I, I got to pay the bet within five business days after the official ending of the regular season. I got your money though. Dude, was that how that, was, is that, how that works? Well, I, what was the bet? Okay, what was the bet? What bet did you make? The the Lakers will finish above the Kings. Above that came the Kings? In, that came and caught us the last five games of the season, man. It was pitiful. Bro. Y'all, I got a super chat from Yurt. He said, Jimmy was ready to give it his all one final time. What a heartbreaking injury. And in case you don't know, in case you don't know, I, I got you right next, Mars. I, I just want to fill the people in who didn't watch the game that Jimmy Butler's expected to be sidelined for several weeks after sustaining an MCL injury to his right knee last night. Celtics if you've seen it, you know. 
Embarrassing. Wow. That's Mark, can you talk to us about the Sixers <laughs> game last night against Miami? More proof that the play issue doesn't exist. Um, now, two teams that rightfully earned their spot in the playoffs. It's even worse in the East because uh, the Bulls and the Hawks aren't even close to Miami. At least in the West, you could say it's a one-game difference. Maybe there's a case. More proof that this shouldn't exist. There's no reason Miami should have had a game to play and then they now lose their best player, second best player, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. And now they're going to have to go play Chicago. And Chicago is a tough team to beat. I mean, I know they lost Caruso. I don't know how serious his injury is. But they shouldn't be in this position. They should just be the eight seed. They should have been getting ready for Boston. But now two teams who rightfully are playoff teams aren't going to be, well, may not be in the playoffs. And if they are in the playoffs, they're going to be missing guys for their playoff series because the games they shouldn't have had to play. And be yes. tampered. No Jimmy Butler. I mean, honestly, no, no, no Julius Randle. Giannis is hampered. Mars, real talk. Is this uh? 2021. Is, is this even more injured in the East than the 21? The 21 run? 21. That's what this is. Well, going into it for sure. But I mean, anything like the East in 21 was so weird because it just, they just seemed to just start falling apart throughout the playoff run. That's like Boston came in without Jalen Brown. So they, they were already hampered. But then the Bucks just fell apart. James Harden's hamstring tore to shreds. Kyrie got undercut. Um, Giannis hyperextends his knee. Trey Young steps on a ref's ankle, and then just like that, now the whole conference has been hurt. This year, it's like you're going into the playoffs, and the only team that seems to be healthy because Donovan Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell, still isn't a hundred percent in my no, opinion. Sure isn't. We're trash. Um, close year out. Tyrese has been playing with a bad, bad yeah. hamstring. It seems like for three months. So the only yeah. team don't, that's don't healthy. Don't forget, is Mars. Don't forget, Mars. You you think Kawhi's injured too? Still, you think his knee is hurt? Yeah, I don't think he's a hundred percent. Um. Oh yeah, Dante did. Dante was out for the playoffs. I, but I think you could make an argument right now that if you if you were to merge like or could swap a team, I think the Lakers Lakers are, you know, we'll see what happens in the first round with them. But they might be the second best team in the in Eastern Conference right now. Like if you just put them in the East, they legit who, might be the second name? best team. The Lakers. The Lakers. Like this Lakers team right here right now might be the second best team in the in Eastern Conference. That's another Ooh. LeBron stat. You can say it about. But chill, that's crazy. Like that's, I, I just think it's, it's insane how injuries have taken over this thing. I mean, who who else is better than the Heat? I mean, the uh, not the Heat, the Knicks the, with Jalen Brunson and Mitchell Robinson, Isaiah Hartenstein, and OG Ananobi. You think they'd be better? Isn't what isn't what this has always been about? The healthiest team at the end is the yeah, team but loser? but I'm saying, but this run in particular is giving me right. 21 vibes on that side. Right, meaning that like there's just it's wide open for one team. Because no matter who you play, you're going to play, like, for, for instance, just think about this show. They might play versus the, the Bulls in the first round, and no, right. none of us think anything of the Bulls. They right. might win a game, maybe. Yeah. And the Bulls are missing Zach Levine and Lonzo Bulls. Like, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm teams. saying. Like, we haven't talked about Zach Levine in four months. I don't yeah. think we've mentioned Zach Levine since we I've been on the channel. And so yeah. that's that one. And oh, then on top God. of that, in the second round, they play versus maybe the Bucks. With the a hampered no, Giannis, no, no, no. Or, Cleveland, Cleveland, no, they they play Cleveland, Cleveland or Orlando, Cleveland, or Cleveland, yeah, Cleveland Orlando. Orlando. So that's what I'm saying. So, well, then that's one of them. They, they're not they're not taking any games off of them. And then in the, in the conference finals, they're playing versus maybe the 76ers with the hampered Embiid, maybe the Knicks. Like it's just a mess, man. So I, I just I think that, that like I, I, I kind of disagree with what you said, Swipe. I, I think that I think this year with the Bucks is going to be a little bit different in a play in a seven game series settings if Giannis is right. And the reason why I say that, I think that if Giannis is right, I think they can handle it. I don't think he is, though, bro. I think No, no, I'm saying, no, well, he wasn't, remember, he wasn't right when he came back early for that finals. He still was dropping 50 on dudes' biscuits. So Giannis is different, different with a shin with the shin injury this time, though? I think it's the, Not his chin, it's the calf. It's the calf. The calf. Yeah, yeah, but he, calf that injury. injury he had before, that was a devastating, because remember, somebody else had that same injury and didn't even play. Paul mm -hmm. George had that same mm -hmm. injury and shut it down. He didn't even come back mm -hmm. and play. Giannis had that injury, came back in a week. And played in the NBA Finals and dominated everything. Giannis has been different coming off injuries. Even when Giannis had the injuries back when they were in the bubble when he's playing the Miami Heat, Giannis came back, put up 18 to one quarter before he got hurt again in that series. So they got smoked like, out though. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm saying, but he, I'm saying he can still, he's shown us. Giannis can play ability. through injury. Basically. Yeah, he's shown us the ability but, to play. I'm saying, but a calf now that that just sounds real dangerous. That sounds well, real you know, dangerous. Well, it was so. dangerous then. It was dangerous then because. At that time, you also got to remember he had other players on his team that were kind of hampered too. So it wasn't like it was just him. You know what I'm saying? And then along the way, when he's been hampered, you've had guys that have been out in certain series where it was him and Drew Holiday trying to hold it down. So, like I said, now well, that's the only hope. The well, that's what I'm saying. That that would be the only well, hope then if that Giannis never is, is healthy enough to, to it, like it, try it, to be a competition. Even if that's true, Swiper, 
we all have, we, you and me have had this conversation numerous times that despite being good, being good ain't good enough. What do you need? You need some things to go your way in order to win. And that happens. And in this particular situation, yes, you are getting lucky. And so what? No, it's, not about, it's, not, about, it's not about the lucky? Celtics, though. I'm not pointing out. I'm not, I'm not aiming at the East. That's what it, no, that's what it I'm, sounds I'm aiming like. at the East. I'm aiming at the East as a whole. The East has just been all year, which is why the win profile has been so low, which right. is why I hit 250-win team. It's been hurt. Now, can, can, we use the, can we use the logic that maybe the East is better than what we think it is? They just beating up on each other? So I, I, what I equated to is I equated to the AFC North in football, basically – with, with Cleveland and Pittsburgh and Baltimore and these teams missing the playoffs, like winning like six or seven games, or seven or eight games, but they just beaten up. I believe they call it the black and blue division, where they just beaten up on each other. It's not the fact that the division isn't good. It's just that they beaten up on but each even, other. But they had three legitimate teams, though, like with the Ravens. I mean, with the Ravens, the Browns, and with the Bengals. The Bengals got right. hurt. So I think some of this is like on the other end with the Eastern Conference, they just don't have – like, Embiid has a horrible playoff record. He looks like he's hampered now. He didn't look good yesterday. Yeah, he, he's, he's not right. He's That's not what right. I'm saying. Like, he wasn't, like, his, his jump shot. Is he not right, or is play. he out of shape? Man, no, he's, he's, no, no, he's not right. He's not right. He re-hurted against Orlando. But, but Mars, you guys are wrong about that, bro. He still is enough. With with the with Even with Joel Embiid being hampered, even on his worst day, he's still 23 and 12, 13. He's still yeah. 23 and 13. And then yeah, he's still a good right. player. But here, he's here's something else he does, Mars, that you guys ain't recognizing. He controls the tempo of the game because he draws so many fouls. Yeah. So what he's gonna what, he, what he's gonna do against the Knicks, and I love the Knicks all season, but them losing Julius Randle is gonna do they're gonna lose that first round series. He's gonna control the foul line in the first round series. The Knicks fans are gonna complain after this series. But Jaylen, the free I think the difference is Jalen, though, bro. No, but he's gonna but watch what I'm talking about. Nah, Nick Nick the, 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 the coach that they the coach that they have, they're gonna give him all kind of hell in this series because they're gonna double him all series long and make somebody else beat them. When them losing Julius Randle, who yes, he has had bad playoff performances, but he's the only other big they had that could rebound at that level. Mitchell and Isaiah type of point production and facilitate the offense with around six, seven. Well, Mitchell, per Mitchell, game. I, Mitchell and Isaiah. That's, with that's OG right, is, right is, quick. Be, before we even get into the series, because we're gonna talk about this, and then we gotta talk about the Lakers and the Nuggets, because mm. I gotta hear from my man Swipe of what's gonna happen in that series. So we we gonna get to both of these series, but right now we still with the Sixers in the Heat. Ox, I haven't heard from you in Mars. Did you get a chance to finish? Did you have anything else on that series you wanted to say? No, I'm just hating on the play. Uh, okay. the, yeah, that's it. I'm just hating on the play. Ox, takeaways from that series. Talk to me, man. Uh, from last night's game? Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked it. I know a lot of people were saying it was a bad game. It was ugly, but that's, I like that type of – I like those type of games. Um, I mean, they came back and they won. I mean, <laughs> hold up. It was a good game, though. Can, can you talk about the coaching? Because we, coach, no, I, 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 oh, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. harp on saying they'd lose if they had Doc Rivers, but they would lose if they ain't have Doc Rivers. Yeah, they, I like, uh, I like, I like what Spo was do doing. Do y'all, y'all was, do I, I like. I, I didn't like want to. He doing. asked my coach, and I'm just, I, I stayed quiet. I didn't want to say. It. Ticket, you think that you, you right? ticket, hold on, ticket, hold on, ticket. Do you think that Doc Rivers makes the adjustments that Nick Nurse made last night? Bro, Doc Rivers is one of ten coaches in NBA history to have. Yeah, I get with all of that. I get with all of that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because y'all go too far with this disrespect. Okay. It's like this is the most disrespect I've ever seen for a coach who will be in the Hall of Fame. Yes, Once again, Chilltown, you guys were the ones arguing with me that if Kevin Garnett, when I said that Kevin Garnett under the championship team, again. you guys were the ones who told me I was delusional because if KG didn't get hurt, they probably win another championship they win it again. with the Boston Celtics. So then you yeah. we're not talking about Doc Rivers like the way they talk about him now. So but and then here's another thing, right? What did Swiper just say about Joel and B? He says he does what? What did he just say? The playoffs, He's right. So is that Doc Rivers' fault that this dude always chokes in the playoffs? Is that Doc Rivers' fault? What you about to see with James Harden over there with the LA strippers? No. Is this Doc well, Rivers' Doc, fault? Well, Doc Rivers it's all this stuff. Doc Rivers' fault. Fair, but, but, the, but, the, but the but the difference but the difference I I I'm, I'm down the whole players accountable ticket. But two things can be true now, right? Two things can be true because just like Joel B doesn't perform in the playoffs like he should, just like Kawhi Leonard, just like all of them dudes, they don't show up in the playoffs like they should. The majority of the time, I'm not. Paul I'm not I'm Kawhi, I mean, I don't know well, about well, that. Yeah, Kawhi was about to go. I'm still with you. Yeah, he probably didn't say Paul George. That's yeah, what I'm I was talking about. Yeah, not, not, not okay, so, but with that, with that, with that being said, the adjustments that Nick Nurse made last night, the in-game adjustments that Nick Nurse made last night, does Doc Rivers make those in-game adjustments? Why y'all hype? Why y'all hype? Hey, Bob, let me answer this question. Those in-game adjustments don't. Those in-game adjustments don't matter for two things. 
if Jimmy's if Jimmy doesn't get hurt, those in-game adjustments don't matter. And if the if the Miami Heat just hit shots, those in-game adjustments don't matter. Right? The Miami Heat had full control of that game. <coughs> when Jimmy Butler got hurt, it limited them and made and forced them to run the entire offense through crazy ass Tyler Hero. That helped kill the game. So now when you look at the other side, right? We look at the other side, when we say, hey man, what about Joel and B? Guess what? Doc Rivers could have coached up Joel and B to do what he did late in that game. Joel and no, B did that no, just no, off no, of, no, no. that was just off basketball. He he's comes not down, nervous. hold on, hold on, but he, but he, hold on. But he's not nervous. Hold on, it's, 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 it's even more than that. It's even more than that. He comes down in transition. He gets passed. He hits the big three. He comes back, gets the offensive rebound, gets hit, throws it up. That's not coaching. No, but it, it's That's the spacing. Play. No, it's the spacing that that Nurse creates though within the offense. That's why Embiid was asked to be a different level playmaker. He, I don't think he's a much better passer than he was a year before. No, no, I'm talking about. Dallas I think West what Nurse is. Nice yeah, I, but I'm saying, but I think what Nurse has done is he's been able to optimize their offense by helping Embiid to find. Low, like that pass he had underneath to uh, Kelly Oubre, for instance, mm -hmm. when they kind of because the way the zone was working, they were like literally like pivoting the zone wherever the ball was coming out of. So Embiid was cutting, creating opportunity for a three point shooter. But when Embiid at the top of the key, he dove that ball in uh, to Kelly Oubre. He Nick Nurse just helped him to know how to locate weak points in the defense. And so that's why his passing took a leap this year. And even that pass he made yesterday. And I think when you look at Embiid, for instance, in game six or whenever it was, remember. Last year, Embiid said, I didn't get the ball down the stretch of the game. That's what, that's what it was. That, that, pass to Kelly, that pass to Kelly Oubre isn't created by, by, jo by Joel Embiid. That's, sim that is, huh? that's just a very, that's just very simple. That that's, that's, that's a that's, simple hold on, read, hold on, yo, hold on. That's, that's, just, that's, just, that's just very that's simply simple Kelly read, Oubre finding an open spot on the floor. That has nothing to do with, with Joel, Joel Embiid being some, some type of better pass or a Nick Nurse putting Joel. That's, that's Kelly Oubre finding an open spot in the goal. Embiid has which, missed multiple which is, which passes over which is what, the course of his career Which is what you're supposed to be doing. When you're when you when you're playing, especially at this level of basketball, you have to be able to find the open spots in the zone. I, and on top of that, I'm not going to – I'm not giving they've Nick been, Nurse they've been credit. They've been getting beat they in was, by they that was zone for Nick Nurse, Nick Nurse did not create – Nick oh, Batum goodness. hitting seven threes. You know what I'm saying? That's what. That's, they, he, but he changed. That. No, that, uh, uh, no, uh, no, let, oh, let, let, let him finish his point. He's, let him finish his point. I was yeah. talking in the middle of it, Brian. Let him let him interrupt me. Put your uh, buck jersey back on, bro. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Is is tough shots he's shooting over contestants? It's not like that's some they're running something different in the zone for Nick for Nick Batum to get these shots. A lot of those, a lot of that's Nick Batum. Now that's a part of the game. I'm not taking that away from them winning. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a part. Nick Batum is a professional. Nick Batum is, has been a really good player all his career. So I'm not taking anything away from that. I'm saying that Nick Nurse is not creating that. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like Doc Rivers, Doc Rivers and Nick Nurse, what's what's the difference? I, oh, my you know gosh. I mean? All right. They I'm not entertaining this conversation. I'm not entertaining this conversation. Hold on. Let him finish his point. Let him finish his point. Every time Ron wants to hear a point. Every time Ron wants to hear a point. He wants him to finish. Let him finish his point. 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 About Nick you Nurse the, in about seven seasons, they're gonna be talking about Nick Nurse the same way they talk about Doc Rivers. He got that one ring because Kawhi, because of Kawhi, just like Doc got over there in Boston, and they're gonna be talking the same the same stuff they're talking about Doc Rivers. They're gonna be talking about Nick Nurse. That's it. <laughs> I think Swiper got a point with what he said about yeah Drake ain't hold on hold on ticket Drake ain't got no bar because Drake ain't said nothing for real Drake ain't mm. said nothing oh we got we got Nick Nurse Nick Nurse and Doc Rivers they're the same coach that's what I heard Drake ain't said nothing but but Element OP that's all he said nothing no substance whatsoever he just said they what's the wow. difference what's the, they're the same so what I'm saying to you is you don't notice you don't see a noticeable difference between how they're playing offense this year and last year nothing. Nothing. No I mean, noticeable difference. Uh, yeah, there's differences. There's differences. Like so, you don't think Joe there's, would there's be there's differences in every every coach. What are you trying to prove? Like, what are you saying? Well, you just said they're the same. So if one coach is performing better than the other, say, the regular I season, didn't, setting, I, didn't, I didn't say they're the same as, as in they're the same coach. I'm saying they're the same level. Of course, no coach is the same. Swiper. I'm saying they're at but the same level. But you say they're at the same level. They're not. Like, they're, they're, they're completely I don't feel coaches. like I don't feel like Nick Nurse is some far superior coach. I've not seen it. Of course he is. He's been better. Doc has been terrible in the playoffs. No, no, Ox, Ox. Doc has legitimately. Been terrible in the playoffs. Okay, cool, cool. But but I'm saying, but there's all three: Harden, like Embiid, and him have been bad. Go all, ahead. I'm, all I'm but, saying is, I don't think Nick Nurse is a superior coach to Doc Rivers. That's right. What is the, hey, so, what, what is Nick Nurse look like in the playoffs outside of having Kawhi? I don't think that's the thing. But again, chicken, we haven't met before. So my philosophy without is with, with winning, with winning a hey, elk. Shh, my, without my point. Kawhi, my, my my point is the, the issue is is that if you don't have a superstar 
and a healthy roster, like you got to got a you have to have a one on one player, and you have to have a healthy roster and elite coaching. You have to have all that in order to make a championship run for me more times than not. I don't think Nick Nurse has had any of that since he had Kawhi. So he wasn't beating a lot of these elite teams. Now he was going to put pressure on you. He was going to make it difficult. But like if you look at who they were losing to, they just didn't have the roster. Like Pascal but Siakam. Lost to the Celtics though. Who? Doc. He ain't losing no Doc. penny any team. He lost to the number one seed. They were up three two. They should have won the game. They should have closed no, no, that no, game no, six. No, 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 no. But he, but here's the thing. Was he, okay, you're a Denver Nuggets fan, right? Take Jamal Murray off that team and put last year's James Harden. Do you have the same confidence? <laughs> they, they, but they still would have. They still would have won though. Got, no, they no, would have beat the Lakers. They would have beat the Lakers. I can tell you that much. I ask you a question though. With Mike Malone coaching, same coach, same role play, same everything. Take Jamal Murray off that team and switch for last year's James Hart. Do you have the same confidence they can win the ship? I think Jamal Murray's better because he's different. I, I'm not asking you that though. I'm asking you. I think I'm they still to, win the chip. Oh, yeah. If you if you ask me if they win the chip next to Joker, yes. Last year, Joel Embiid was the MVP. Jokic was right there, the MVP too. You can say both two. MVP level bigs, right? Mm. The only thing I'm doing is mm. is switching off the guard play. So here's my question to you: huh? You take last well, year's well, Jamal one Murray, of them, one of them functionally is a different player than the but other. Swiper, well, I'm saying, but you take last year's Jamal Murray, you put him with Doc Rivers in that series up three two. You think they get that series through with Jamal Murray and and, and Joel Embiid? Well, I don't know what to tell you. If you if the you, way if you Murray, give them the if you give them if you give them the best player right. if you give them the best player on the team, yeah, no problem. I think Jamal will be. I, I've been clear about this. Jamal's been better than but I'm saying, but playoffs, you're unsure. But you just me. you just said about stars, though, Swiper. But you're unsure about Mars, the one up. star, the main star he had, which was James Harden, cheesecake over teammates. That was the main star. But Harden and functionally you, next to Joker you know, you would be a different level player, though. You, you know it's true because right. So that's what I'm saying. It's levels to this. So when you look at it, when you when you look at the guys Doc Rivers has had to deal with. Look at these buffoons right, that he's had to deal with. You've had to deal with a guy. But Doc has also not playoff. been good, though. No, Take no, but hold on. But you can't say that when, listen. Yes, I can. can't. I, say I, that got, a whole, got, I got hold. history with Doc. I got, I got, got history but, with but, Doc. But, but, but listen what I'm saying. You can't say that when he got guys that actually achieved, got to a level and then choked. But not just with him. This is the thing. They not just choked with him. They choked all across the board. You've seen this with James Harden. you said it yourself with Joel Embiid. You've seen it with Paul George. But Doc so Rivers has also done that, though, multiple times, including what, when he was no, the no, Clippers saying, when they lost to Houston for, for no reason. True. No, I'm saying, but no, no, swipe I'm saying, but it was because of those guys. It no, it's not. It's also George. because of Doc Ticket. No, Ticket. I, I wanna, I'm going to be fair. The players choke, but Doc Rivers also sucks when it comes to, to baseline rotations, baseline decision-making. For instance, you probably watched that Clippers series versus the Nuggets. He had Lou Will and Harold playing way too many minutes in that series just because they were veterans and they were good in the regular season. They never should have been on the court games five, six, and seven. But he kept using them, and they kept getting burnt because he wanted the offense out there, even though they were absolutely getting cooked on the other end. You, well, you so had I think to have Doc, the, but you had to have the offense out there, dog, when Paul George is playing like monkey crap. When Paul so was Kawhi, but Kawhi was too. Hold, hold on, but when Paul, hold on, when Paul George is shooting balls out the side of the backboard, Kawhi had two, two points dudes, in back to back four got, quarters. Ticket. No, no, I'm saying, but you got two dudes that are six men of the year candidates. I can't come to the playoffs and then just sit you on the bench. No, I have to ride with the guys I came with. I can't all of a sudden out of the blue start hiking guys off the bench that ain't built for this moment that I ain't seen tested or none of this. I have to depend on what got me here. And that, and listen. Again, I think we put more emphasis on the coaches than we do the guys that's out there on the court performing. A coach can tell you what you're supposed to do, and you want to do it. Let me give you a case in point. Look at Chilltown's king, LeBron Ramon James. He openly said he don't listen to Darvin Ham, but all these dudes will blame Darvin Ham for all the failures of the Lakers. But guess what, then, Swiper? As soon as LeBron James hit his can down, when did LeBron say he don't listen to Darvin Ham? He never said that. When did LeBron say that? When did LeBron say that? Fellas, 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 fellas. Never fellas. We, we, we never do this. No, we're not going. We're not going. We're not going down this road, Rod. No, we're not going down this road. But I think the point that we're missing here, which what, which is what Swiper said, two things can be true. As good as 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 much as those guys have not played in the playoffs, Doc Rivers has also fumbled the ball too. So How? last night. Come on, last you three, one. Let me ask you a question. How many you, series do you need? This. Your cousin, who's a who's a world champion, who's a who's a four time world champion. Hall Chill, who's famous, your cousin? Chill, who's, who's your cousin, player. Chill? Your cousin Shaquille O'Neal said it's for the players. When you get up three one in the lead, the superstars close the deal. If you don't close the deal, it's the superstar fault, man. Stop Chill, giving these dudes a pass. I went and looked at game five, six, seven. Paul George, monkey crap. James Harden, game Stop, six, seven. Coaching the part of that. Fold it. Hold on. Hold on. Fold it under the pressure. Then you go back. Let's keep going. Chris Paul, 
always been a failure when it came to the big moments that got hurt. But they blame it only on Doc Rivers. And again, it's going to be so sweet this year because when Joel and B folds again, are they going to be able to blame Doc Rivers? When these guys we've seen fold, fold again, and Paul George against the Dallas Mavericks, fold again, are we going to be able to blame Doc Rivers? No. We're going to have to start blaming these players, and that's the problem I have. We used but, to come but from hold on, era. but 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 ticket ticket hold on, hold on ticket master ticket master StubHub. Let me ask you a question. I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out if Doc Rivers has multiple three one blown leads with multiple iterations of teams. Is it? Have, does he have anything to do with any of that for you? Regardless, no. Of the I didn't say he didn't. I'm yes, you just did. The, yes, you, you just did. did. You brought up his point. Just to be fair, you did. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First thing that you hold just on, brought hold up. Hold on, hold on, hold no, you all gone. The first thing that you just brought up was quote, chill. Your cousin said when you up three one, the players are supposed to handle that. So you basically taking Doc Rivers off the table. Go win the game. That's essentially what you're saying. Now the point here is two things can be true. The point is is that these players they don't play up to par. In, in closeout games or in the playoffs. But also, coaches fumble the ball too. Doc Rivers is one of those guys. Last night is evidence. I'm watching that zone defense that Nick, that, that Nick Nurse had adjusted to. I don't see Doc adjusting to the well, way hold Nick on, Nurse did. Now, hold on. Well, Chip, now, let me talk to this wannabe me over here for a minute. First of all, <laughs> let me say this to you, right? And I'm going to get you right, Wait, right who now. Who is he we're, addressing? We're going to get this who right, right now. First of, all, first of all, who is we come from an error. We come from an error. How are we, we to say Hold on. Hold on. But me and you, hold on. We come from an error where it's player accountability. The players always took responsibility. Who is we? Ca- we ain't the same age. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Swiper. Let me get this off. No, you don't go sit somewhere. I got you, Swiper. Stop doing that. I got you, Swiper. Let me get this off, and I got you. Every time tickets start talking, here come Ron. Swiper, Swiper. When Shaq and Kobe and those guys fold in the playoffs, you never seen them point and say, hey, man, that's Phil Jackson's fault. When Tim Duncan and them don't play well, you never hear them sit point and say, hey, man, that's that that's Greg Popovich's fault. We never repeated. That's Greg Popovich's fault. We never. Greg Popovich never won back to back. He had a legit superstar team his entire career. Never won back to back. But we never say he's a bad coach. We we never hear people say Larry Brown is bad. Look at all the legends and Hall of Famers he coached. We never hear this about any other coach just slander. It only comes to Doc Rivers on this level, and we've seen it from Don Nelson. We've seen it from Jerry Sloan. We've seen it all through NBA history. These coaches do not get nowhere near the same smoke. As Doc Rivers, and it's to me, it's disgusting, bro. And listen, <laughs> I respect your opinion, I respect your breakdowns of the game, and I respect where you come from as far as your breakdown of the game. Like All I'm saying is this: if we and we're talking about a percentage of sir. blame, bro. Listen, when the players hit big time shots, when Dame and these guys are hitting shots from half court, that's not coaching, that's playing. So right. make a miss, that's that's a play. Right. The coach looks good from the result. So right. if I'm a coach and I'm good enough to get you up three one. Uh, but man, let me tell you something. By the end how do you of a wait? How do you get series, credit for going up three one but not blame for no, losing three no, one? By the end of a seven game series, swiper, it ain't no more adjustments to make. It's on the players. The players. No, that's, not, you, basketball. You know that's not basketball. That's not true. 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 Ticket. I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not even. Look. Look. I'm not even trying to like to to push back and argue. I'm just trying to clarify. And and we know. The reason Spo is considered the best coach in the NBA is because he makes constant adjustments on a game by game basis and a series by series basis. He and has the did. ability to adjust to competition and to and your did. best player better than almost anybody in the league. And so what we did, what he did yesterday, even the zone versus Embiid, he he was putting hands in front of his face the entirety of the game. He wanted to make it as difficult as possible for you to move, to find a lane to the rim, and to stay off the free throw line and not have open opportunities to throw easy passes. That's what Spo does. And so we've seen Spo in series, including versus the Celtics, outcoach Joe Mazzula. And we all acknowledge that a part of the reason they were down 0-3 is because Spo was outcoaching Mazzula because he knew how to tap into his players better than Joe did. So for you, you know better than to say that in the seven-game series, there's no more adjusting to be made because that's just not true. Even no, last year in the NBA Finals. Well, I'm what I'm saying, but even, one, even, even, even last know, year, hold on, let me just, let me just finish. Even last year Hold on, let me finish, Even last year, even last year in game four, there you go, Ron, equal equal adjustment hold equity host up there even <laughs> last year in game four when the when the miami heat are running a zone defense you know what they did the nuggets eventually had Jokic at the top but then eventually malone coached him up and said you know what that's not working we're gonna put Jokic on the baseline throw it to yoke on the baseline christian porter everybody else bruce brown now you're cutting Doc off rivers that is action. not making that adjustment now you're He's cutting not. off that action and they're blowing up the zone because there's open three-point shooters and there's open rim runs that's what i'm saying like 
That's a part of coaching. You have to recognize that. Doc Rivers is He's so good making at making He's regular not. season adjustments. Your, 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 your win profile to regular season is going to change most times. But when you get into a but playoff, it's, it's, when it's nuances, that's when he gets yeah, taken okay, apart so this is the same versus better on. coaching. That's so, what happens. But Town wants to jump in, too, with you. But this is the same guy who sat up here and told me that he thinks Doc Rivers would have won two champ, multiple championships right. with that Celtics team if KG right. doesn't get hurt. Remember, right. they lost to the Orlando Magic, who ended up going to the NBA Finals that and year. We'll, so, yep. so, but hold, so hold on. Correct. So let's take Correct. let's take that one back right there. And then I want to say, no, this. I'm not here's taking why, that back. Here's why, here's why I going. disagree. Hold on. Yep. Here's why I disagree with this brother said. I got one question for Swiper. So in that case, Swiper, from what you said, right, from all this slander you put on Doc Rivers. Slander. Do you think yes, slander? I'm have you question. heard me talk oh, about him? Be have you heard me talk about him? Be I, 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 I can go. I got a question for you. I got a, the final boss has a question for you. Do you mm -hmm. do do does he have? And I'm talking about Nick Nurse. Any excuse to lose this series against the Knicks without their second best player, Julius? Randall? Of course, of course, of course. What? He does. Huh? The Knicks are a better team. The Knicks are a better team. Without Julius, Knicks are a better team. Without Julius Randle, he has an excuse. The Knicks are the better team. That's the guy. Okay, so tell me. So, so tell also, tell also, by the way, just to be clear, ticket, just to be clear, ticket. Remember, Embiid struggled with pressure and physicality. They do pressure and physicality better than anybody so in Eastern Conference an outside the Miami Heat. That's bullshit. Wait, what's the He's excuse? He's got an no, MVP on his team. No, what's the He's excuse? He's got an MVP. He got Tyrese Maxx. Got Ron. Don't worry, Ron. I, I'll, I'll follow got... up. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Celebrate. No, wait, 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 chill, 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 chill. You know, he's chill. chill. He's celebrating. He's celebrating. Swiper just said one dude who's never won an MVP. A dude who's missing his second best player, who's a perennial all star, perennial all NBA performer, Julius Randle. He's saying that Nick oh, Nurse NBA. has an excuse with this team that he has, which is deep on all levels. He has shooting, perimeter defense, an elite big man, and an elite point guard. He has an Take excuse it. to lose to a Take team it. that's it's basically not, built like it's not, like, it's it's not about excuses. Built with but again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to communicate to you, Ticket. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a direct question. Based on Yo, and then they, after this, fellas, we gotta move on. Go ahead. Let us cook, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. We working, yeah, Ron, Ron. Ron. Ron over here doing too hey, much. We, 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 we got some work, Ron. We got to talk about. Wait, hey, no, no, no. no, no. I get it. I get it. I get it. We got things we gotta talk about, though. We're gonna get into the series. We're gonna get to it. People want this. Watch out, Ron. Ron, don't make me take the hoodie off again, Ron. With your with your narrow shoulders. With your narrow shoulders, Ron. With your narrow shoulders. You you fill out a hoodie worse than anybody on this panel watch out let me talk go, anyway go look, let me finish. Ticket, Keep going. let me finish Keep going. let me let me finish ticket let me ask you this question go ahead do you think I'm in a playoff be setting be right now given where Embiid's health is do you think Jalen Brunson can be the best player in that series no because I'm gonna tell you oh, why man that's cool. Here, hold on listen I'm about to tell you why right now listen hold on. Why, ticket, why, I'm gonna tell you, right. can I explain can I explain yes, why please, to you? Yeah, please can ticket, I explain please. why to you please ticket please Nick no, Nick Nurse only has one target the only thing he has to do in this series is limit Jalen Brunson. No, he, he doesn't. doesn't. Oh, oh, they, they have he multiple three points. Oh, right. Hold on, Swipe. Hold on, Swipe. Keep going, Ticket. 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 The only thing he has to do is limit Jalen Brunson because the Knicks don't have any other player that can take over or exceed to a level to make up if Jalen Brunson isn't playing at that all-world level. Guess what? The 76ers do. They do have a guy in Tyrese Maxey who can give you 27, 28 points a game in a series if Joel Embiid is only doing 20. Hold on. So let me say this. Let me say this. So here's why he doesn't have an excuse. For mm -hmm. one, you wouldn't give Philly an excuse if Doc was the coach because you didn't give him one last year and Joel Embiid was hurt last year. And missed because that. of his history. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. He had hold three on, straight 30-point games. How hurt was he exactly? Hold on, hold on. Exactly? He, hold on, hold on. He, he didn't, ticket, get, he he didn't give Doc Rivers an excuse last year when Joel Embiid was hurt last year in the playoffs and hurt his face, his neck, and his guy dag on back, right? So he didn't yep. give him no excuse then. So now you're gonna give Nick Nurse an excuse when Nick Nurse what had excuse? Two, well, hold on, hold on. But you just hold on. I asked you, do he have an excuse to lose this series without the, they're not the, the better team on, and they don't the have the best player on, in the but, series, listen, I don't think, on. right now. Bro, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Hold on. If Joel and B doesn't get hurt, Philly is a better player. Philly is a better team. But he's if hurt. Joel, if Joel hold on, if Joel and B get, doesn't get hurt, Philly is a better team. And I'm a, and something else you but he's hurt. Hold on, so, right, but he was hurt last year. So what's the point? No, 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 hold on. But remember, they were up 3-2, and Bede had three straight 30-point games, and Embiid, Harden, and Doc folded. So, again, you're missing me. I want to be clear because you, you haven't met me in person. I don't think Embiid is one of those dudes. I don't think he's a superstar. I have been clear about this because I don't think it translates to the playoff. I don't think that. So Somebody you asking me, it, but you asking me about Doc and <laughs> Embiid, I'm telling you, this is my thought. I think Embiid and Harden are both – I don't want to. I don't want to say they're they're 
they're they're not they're not that. They just don't perform up to expectation in the playoff. So why you get, so not, you, especially so, in B. So do you blame but Doc Rivers also shares blame in his history in those collapses. But I'm telling you that if you ask me, going into this series <laughs> right now, Jalen Brunson's going to be better because he's a better shot maker, better pull up shooter, better playmaker, and he's surrounded by defenders. And in playoff offense, if you're able to beat drop coverage and snake and hit high level shot at the three point shooter, at the mid range shooter, and getting to the rim. That's going to help you. And Jalen Brunson could very easily in this series because who's going to guard him? I got, who's going to guard him? I got, I got two answers for that. Hold on, Ticket. Who, ticket. We, we, hey, ticket. Yeah. We got we to gotta, we gotta move on right quick. We just got to move off of this. I just ran a poll. Who's going to be All better? Right. Jalen Brunson or Joel Embiid? Y'all make sure to go vote. Let me know what's, who's going to be better. What's the, right now? what's the poll right now, Ron? What's the numbers? What's uh, the numbers I on just that? put it up, but right now it's 63% uh, Jalen Brunson. Also, I ran a poll. Who's a better coach, Doc Rivers and Nick Nurse? And Nick Nurse wiped I'm two Doc and oh. Rivers. What am I, 2-0? Am I 2-0 right now? 2-0 mm. one questions? Like, 2-0 hypotheticals? Like, what happened to Ticket? I'll pick All right, y'all. Uh, he'll be back in a second. He, okay. he uh, Probably paused out. But, y'all, I got to take this moment to shout out to everybody that's in here. It's about 2,000-plus people in here. Y'all go ahead and slap that like button. Show us some love on the like button. Also, shout out to all of our new subscribers and new members, too. If you're new to the party, I got to let you know that we have some other shows other than the Fabulous panel. And they come on playback. On Mondays, you can watch PC Football at 5.15 Eastern. On Tuesdays, the illustrious Open Gym will be on playback as well, only on Tuesdays. It will come on today after this show on YouTube and tomorrow on YouTube as well. But on Tuesdays, it will be on playback. Friday, NBA X with J-Rob and Damo. They're going to be cooking up at 6 p.m. Eastern. And then on Saturdays, the best show on the network, allegedly, will be Chill with Chill. And it was the best show on the network, too, yesterday, by the way. New host, dub host. But it will be on playback. And then on Sunday, you also got From the Logo. Y'all be sure to tap in if you haven't yet. See him Go to playback.tv and join the player's choice room. What's up, Chill? You see him, Ox? Allegedly. Right. Allegedly, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Gonna, I know, gonna, I know gonna, Mars gonna would gonna say this, something else. No, nah, we're going to get this script right, Ron. We're going to work it out. <laughs> Believe that. Hold on, no. Like, seriously. Is Chill with you better than Open Gym? The nah, new Open, open Gym, gym though. Oh, with Doma? With Doma? Oh, hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Open Gym? It used to be a big gap. It used to be a big gap. The gap is closed, but it's still, still better, though. Yeah. It's still no, better. What is it that um, Ox said? It's not about the past. You forget right now. That's what it's about. Right now. We, we, go, we, we upgraded. The rest of the We'll see. We'll see on Saturday. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, but Ron, next time, next time, if you're going to let these bozos argue, make sure they make sure they're going to argue about some basketball. Arguing mm -hmm. about, oh, arguing about, or arguing about who got who's going to get the blame. I know Deere ain't talking. I know Deere ain't talking. We don't care about who's going to get the blame or if they win or lose. Let's right. talk some basketball, y'all. Man, y'all never want to argue about You just told me Doc Rivers and, and Nick Nurse are on the same level. Whoop, Whoopi Goldberg. What, what the hell and then bring no about? schematics. <laughs> you heard me, man. You heard me. Y'all, I got I to gotta shout out our new members. Vane mm -hmm. 29 right. became a member today. Kenya Winston, Jay Clips. Learning hoops. Hey, man, we got some people in here learning hoops, man. Shout out That's to learning so, hoops. So. They all became members today, so big ups to them. Shout out to everybody. If you haven't became a member yet, go ahead and click that membership button. You can chat. If you're not chatting in the, uh, typing in the chat right now, you can for just $1.99. And, 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 and Ron, you're disgusting too. too. What's good? You're, you're a disgusting host, and I'm going to tell you why. You, Mars, and Chill Town are all disgusting. And Bob, you too. Because y'all just let this dude Swiper, this wannabe me, get away with coming up here saying that Nick Nurse mm -hmm. has an excuse if he loses this series. <laughs> he he's he's ba he's ba he, hold on, he, hold on. I, I, he, I got you hold ticket swipe and get up out of here. He is that better? Told you, he has just That's better? told you. He has just told y'all that there is an excuse not. if Nick Nurse loses. I just with, told y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. With the dude, about who with, got the dude with the dude who easily could have won two MVPs. And here, here's how the book the easily could have won two MVPs. Who hold on? Who who are you speaking about? Hold on, Joel and B. Before last what MVP game, would he have won? Hold on. But before last night's game, where there was pressure on him. Stop it. Stop it. Did, hold on. But what was Joel Embiid doing game. before last night's game? He's putting up 29 a game, right? When he came back, right? Was it 29 a game? Yeah, 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 yeah. So then last night, when he gets I'm to a pressure out situation again, he folds. So I don't want to hear no excuse about, oh, he was hurt. That He was giving you 29 a game like. before that. So, so Swiper, there it's are. Aura, Swiper. You get to this level, bro. You get to this level, bro. When you got him. Maxi Harris, uh, you got perimeter defense, you got shooting, 
You got veteran they got leaders. Perimeter you defense? Got, hold on, hold on. Who, where's the perimeter all defense at? Bro, we heard got, this shit already. Buddy, 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 buddy Hill and no Tyree Maxey. No, 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 no. Who, no, no, who, no, who's the perimeter I'll defense? The other too. Hold on. Anthony Melton coming back. Anthony Melton. I'm also giving you championship experience. Versus Jalen Brunson, good sir. By the way, you realize that the Sunday are going to be playing. I right, gotta we, read you know these super chats. Too. We about to get go to the series. Right. We gonna get there. I'm asking everybody Yo, in the room. Whatever y'all say, hey, Ron. I'm, whenever I'm, PC sets up the one on one with me and this dude, that shit gonna be legendary. Who? Be worse this dude. What I did, Chill Town. This dude. Nah, swipe him. This. Oh, oh this guy. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I, I fuck with swipe, though. We gonna get to it though. And swipe for the record, I beat him twice. By the way, you a goddamn mm. gonna lie. You. Shit. I didn't beat him once. I beat him twice. You roped him allegedly. Yeah, he did rob me, Mars. Dicky, why Football you CF Candy with the super chat. He said, it's sad to see how badly the Bulls are mismanaged. That front office and ownership don't care because they sell out seats, plus make money. Fans should stop going to Chicago. Fans should stop going. Chicago is the biggest sports market. The ratings tell you. We disappointed in the front office? No, they're not getting free agents. Ain't no free agent going to the cold Chicago. Just be honest. You got to get guys through the draft and through trades. And they got a dude that's unhappy in Zach Levine. And, I mean, listen, he's a perennial loser. So what are you going to say? As soon as he goes away, the team gets better. So they can't be that bad. And I, I don't think – I disagree with Swiper. I think he said that it was going to be easy for the Boston Celtics. I think Chicago gets two games off, off of Boston in the first round. That's because of Boston, though. That's what I've been yeah, saying. Yeah, no, 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 is as great as their record says they are. I think they have chinks within their team that can be exposed. I think that if it's Alex Caruso is healthy, I think something Mars said earlier this year it's could not. be right. If Caruso's healthy and they're able to play more man-to-man -man defense and able to switch on the perimeter with him, Kobe White, and some of those guys, I think that they they will have a better ch a better chance. And also with a guy like Vujicic who can spread the floor and bring some of those bigs away from the basket and help rebounding. With the Chicago Bulls, and then also the big man that got come up the bench can help control the Bulls. I think Chicago can steal a game in Boston, and then it gets very interesting if they steal game one or game two, bro. Well, according to Chill, awesome. they got a top two. They got the best small forward in the league, so hopefully it doesn't happen. Even if, oh, even if, if, if yeah, that 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 that's the that's the difference right there. Yep, it's, it's not the fact that they got one of the best defenses in the league. Who? They're one of the best. The, the, the Boston Celtics, they got they one of do? the best defenses. Yes, they do. They got one of the best defenses in the league. Not only do they have one of the best defenses in the league, they got, I think, a top three, off, top five offense. They got they got the most efficient offense in the league. You're talking regular season? I got you. Yes, we're talking regular season. Yes, we are talking regular season. They should they should handle the – if the Bulls beat the if the Bulls beat the Miami Heat, they should handle the Bulls in five games tops. What if they don't? Two. What if they get two games? Then they, they'll you handle them in – Are you going to be concerned? Then they'll handle them in six games like oh, they did in Atlanta last yeah. year. Then that's it right there. So <laughs> all right, so Riddell sent through a super chat. He said the East is saved again now that the Heat are injured again. Bucks and Celtics are sighing in relief. Also, Ticket is not the final boss. Hmm. He's the comedy act, Jimmy Uso. Hmm. The also, I disagree say, with the Mars. Number say, the number fight. say otherwise. The number say otherwise, and you continue to sock it to my pocket and put that bread in this in this account. Mm -hmm. Which, which numbers are you referencing? Speed rocket. Hmm. The analytics? Plans, plans is Tickets Tick an analytics guy? Yes, he is. Basically, I'm leading the league. I'm leading the league. I'm leading the league. I'm leading the league. Yeah, we need tickets. The, the, the show, what, the show move, Borp goes move. up with Ticket. Man, look at that, bro. Look at that. I, I told you. Hey, Mars. Tickets Borp. Ticket leading PC and Warp. Ticket Warp is something else, B. Tickets value or replacement player. There it is right there. Wait until we find out Ticket's kitchen sink, man, probably, man. There you go. Is Ticket, wait, does Ticket lead the show at EPM? No, no, he he, he, he he probably he, leads a leads the show in augmented plus minus stuff. I can okay, augmented, and okay, definitely okay. ticket has definitely ticket has the highest four. One hundred percent, he has that. No he got the lowest that. LeBron though, by far the lowest LeBron. Mm. Yeah, I, got the lowest LeBron. I just should know what numbers you were referencing. I got you though. Warp, warp. Yeah, well, and, and, and for the record, charts. ticket, this this is your value on with, with with the group. This is why you in the top three in the league in MVP votes for this reason right here. That's nah, why every all the pieces fit. You know what I'm saying. You know what they call me, though? They call me Cam Newton, bro. I came in one year, Auburn won a national championship, though, Ticket. I don't know what to tell you, bro. All right, let's go. We next next we Super Chat, so we can get back to it. We acknowledge world championships. Those world championships? No, just thing. We don't win world championships in the NBA. We don't win the world championships in the NBA. And I do think Ron is disgracing his comment. I mean, this this stream today by not acknowledging one thing. Um, Michael Porter Jr.'s brother, bro, 
the hell is Out wrong with you, man? Out the league. What the hell is wrong with you, bro? What the hell is wrong with you, bro? Well, ticket, you got to remember, you in the too. National, hold on, what's your time? You in the National Basketball Association mm -hmm. betting on your own team to lose, bro. Ticket, I think you, I, I think you forget. He's actually bet. He's he's better at betting than he is at basketball. That's crazy. How you so, in the NBA betting on your own team to yeah. lose? You got dudes betting and winning millions of dollars on these games, and think you ain't gonna get caught when they're betting on you, and you ain't even a star player, and they're betting all this money on you. Yeah. And now you're yeah, done. You're banned for life, man. I I start, someone, it, someone did that in football and go an eight month ban. So lifetime is kind of. That's no, tough. lifetime is real because yeah. when you do yeah, that, Mars, I never said it was wrong. I said it was tough. That's what I if said. You're Mars, tough. If, you're a smaller, if you're a smaller guy doing that and you're getting away with that, imagine what would have happened if it was a bigger guy who's like point shaving. That's what he was doing. He's point shaving. No, but so he, now, if you're he, so, only, so, he didn't bet on games he played in. No, no, but when you're he not. Got, no, when no, he bet no, on his team to lose, No, no, no. He gave information on games he played in. Oh, yeah, about his injuries. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm saying that when he bet on his team to lose, he didn't play in those games. Yeah, but it wasn't like he was going to affect them winning. So he 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 knew he knew, he knew. <laughs> but but look my point is is this when Ticket, you start like, doing that bro and you point shaving bro that makes everybody ask every put everything into perspective I don't know if swipe swipe was on here or I think it was either him or Ox that was talking about the free throw disparity <laughs> for the Lakers a lot of people look at this stuff when they're betting and stuff like that like how is this team getting this many free throws how would this team getting this many opportunities versus the the next team in the league. Like a lot of this stuff, we got to look at a lot of these different things, man. When we're talking about these games, when we're talking about refing, when we're talking about players' performances, when players are in and out of games, things like that, bro. It make me take it make me take a closer look at a lot of stuff around the league. Because if a dude at this lower level is doing it, if you have a dude at a higher level that's point shaving and stuff like that, bro, that's a real black eye on the league. So it had to Ma, be a lifetime ban. Mars, Ma, that's the, Ma, that's like me saying I'm gonna get a game plan away to somebody else. I'm just not going to play in the game, so it's not that bad. I'm still giving the game plan away. I'm still killing us. Well, he, I mean, like, I'm, I don't, mm. I, I just find it funny the NBA promotes all this gambling. But, like, um, he, if he's, if he's not a very good player, which I guess we can agree on that. No, he, he played well this year when he played, though. Yeah, I, I think he's cool. I think he's solid. John though, but, got some um, game for him. Yeah, I, I, brother, I think he's cool. And, he and I think he's probably going to play overseas somewhere. But, um, if he's saying his team's gonna lose and he's not playing, so affecting the outcome, I understand why it's wrong, but I don't think that's the biggest problem. The biggest problem is when he tells his friend or a co party or whatever about an injury or something that hasn't been put out to the public, and then someone places an eighty thousand dollar bet on his unders. That's crazy. I don't know why he thought he could get away with that. Right, someone just put, someone just put right, 80,000 on Jonte Porter's rebound. Like, that's here's, crazy. Here, here's why you're wrong, Mars, and I'm going to just leave it real simple. You're wrong because mm -hmm. of this. If I say, if me and Ox and Chill and, and, and uh, Swipe are on the same team, and I come off and I say, hey, man, I know these guys are going to lose this game, and I'm betting on them to lose, people could interpret that as, they throwing games you know on something. purpose. Yeah, you know something mm -hmm. that we don't they know. They throwing games on purpose. How you know they're going to lose? You throwing yeah. games on purpose. You clearly you know, know something we don't so know. So that goes You got to assume that he's working with somebody that's playing more minutes. Right. And that's going to make that's going to throw them. That's going to throw them so, under the so if, too and so get if, them Johnny, if Johnny Davis right. put a bet on the Wizards to lose, that's because he knows something or because the Wizards are true? No, but I'm saying, but you don't, but you don't, hold on. But you you got to understand, like, if he teammates more, he could be working with his team. Let's say these dudes, like, for example, they're already trash. Mars, you've had coaches come out. You had like the coach it. from the the coach from the cast came out said he was threatened over over these gambling things. Like he got oh, phone sure. calls yeah, and threatened. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. So what, what I'm saying is this this stuff is real. People putting a lot of money on this stuff. So if you got people that's influencing you that that are that are that are like this dude said people threatening his life. So if you got people that are maybe Bigger Staff said that. Bigger yeah. Staff. Yeah, go back and listen. Yeah, to a lot of players have come out and said some of the crazy things people. Have yeah, said remember about. Tyree Talliburton said that he we feel like we're just like a part of like a machine. Basically, we don't feel right. like real people. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. I want to clarify. I'm not saying Dante Porter's lifetime ban is wrong. I think it's I think it's tough. Like I think they used him to make an example of like this is the repercussions of what you do. He's at the first one, so that makes sense. I do think it's I think it's a bad look for two reasons, which is the NBA promotes gambling and sports books all over their broadcasts, and that's weird to me that you're going to come down on it that hard. And two, the things that other players have done, which is much worse that they don't give lifetime bans for. That's a bad look, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I understand that doesn't mess up their money, so it's fine. They'll just let domestic abusers play basketball, and it's cool. Mm -hmm. But someone yeah, bets and it affects the NBA's bottom line, 
lifetime battle. That's why meanwhile, I mean, while you pro- meanwhile you promoting betting and you have actual deals. Yeah, that, that's that's why that's why I think it's a bad look. But, 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 but I understand, I understand I'm, why it happens. I if I'm promoting, I, I think I need to stop cheating. What is that? If I'm promoting Ox and cheating Ox at the same time, what is that? If I'm saying, I'm yo, wrestling. go bet with Ox, but but then guys in my league are cheating Ox and making Ox lose money, that's gonna cause me a lawsuit. So for example, right. if I have a deal with uh DraftKings and one of these uh bet companies, right? And I say, hey man, I'm promoting them. I'm promoting everybody to go put your money in with this shit. But then we cheating them at the same time and stealing their money while I'm promoting it. That opens me up to a lawsuit to libel. So the dude that bet eighty thousand dollars on a parlay, that's like a six seven game bet yeah, on John T. Porter to win one point one million dollars, and he won. You that's you know what happens to the league? The league can yeah, catch a lawsuit right. if they can tie anything into a scheme of players scheming to do something like that. For these guys outside to win that type of money, bro. So you have but to see. I, this, that's the thing. That's the thing right there, though, ticket. That's why I mean, from the beginning, especially this year and last year, how it's been going, getting bigger and bigger again. That's why I don't, I don't agree with all the gambling stuff. I think they need to, you know, dial it back down a little bit. I think we're just asking for more, more and more stuff like this to happen. It's going to continue to happen. People are going to continue to try to beat the system because it's money involved. And once again. Just because you got money or because you're good at basketball does not make you an intelligent person. Like, smart people don't think they can get away with shit like this. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, it's, it's really I don't know what he put an $80,000 bet on his unders was going to achieve. I don't know why he thought he could get away with right. that. That's ridiculous. Come on, hey, bro. Ox. Like, people, yo, people, yo, people, yo, that, yo. people that use their brain don't, you got to use your think box. Like, yo, Ox, we, we can keep doing this. No, we can't. What are you talking yeah. about? He would have no, been better can't. off betting on his overs and just going out and getting busy. The bad thing about that, what that does is you know, put uh, Eddie Bears on that run. What that does is for his team now is <laughs> his, what that does for his team, being that you did that and you, your brother plays in the league for one of the yeah. best teams in the league. Now, guess what's gonna happen? Everybody's gonna look at Michael Porter Jr. if he has a bad game. Yeah. So, so Swiper, if Michael Porter Jr. <laughs> goes to the playoffs against the Lakers, I have no comment, and has a bad game, everybody's gonna look at him and say, Hold on, man, he threw Are you want to take. Are you want right. to take? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's, that's right. why it's a slippery slope for y'all this playoffs. I have no comment. <laughs> I mean, you you would assume that you would assume they would have to start investigating his brother, even if Michael. I'm not saying Michael's involved, but even if he's completely innocent, they're gonna keep an eye on him, though. They're gonna be like, oh, you know, your brother did this, you know. Yeah, I'm they got you. That's just that's just I'm, that's I'm, just I'm, proper investigative skills. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to be. Looking Damn, at. that made me think about the NBA Finals last year, Swiper. Mm, shit. <laughs> Dang, that boy when MPJ wasn't shot. making shots, he was mm, man. That boy missed everything in the finals last year, bro. Mm. So I think I paid last summer. That. Hey, let me tell y'all. Let me tell y'all. Uh, by the way, I meant to tell you real important. Uh, if you ain't heard of this place called Las Tortas, it's a Mexican place, man. They got really good burritos and quesadillas over there. So you said shout out, bro. Yeah, La- Las Tortas, Las Tortas. They got great Mexican mm-hmm. food, great burritos. Hey, uh, ticket. If you can get, or? you can get two chicken, two chicken burritos. They healthy, they healthy is, you know, they're not like you know, a bunch of new monsters on it. And you can get some queso, twenty five dollars, two burritos and some queso. Right, free promotion, love, crazy. Yeah, we we we're, we're, we're not sponsored by this place, but I guess free promo. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. When we go to Denver, we eating there for free. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you heard me say that. I, I mean, that'd be like, that was hey, like I, t- like I told y'all before, if it ain't if it ain't in California, it ain't it ain't gonna be nothing. You know yeah, but he's, he's the best. Fact, he's the best Colorado? Mexican, Colorado, the best, the best Mexican food in the world is in Colorado. Colorado. You watch what I tell you. He's made it hard for his brother. They're gonna have a microscope on Michael Porter Jr. now. If he does, if he's missing shots that he normally makes, missing wide open shots and stuff like this, they're gonna really start watching him now. They're gonna watch the best that are made on him. They probably went back and looked at bets that have been made on him in the past because that was just crazy in the finals last year. He was missing all those threes like that. I couldn't believe it. He just out of nowhere missed everything. All right, y'all. Get Kogu 13 said final boss and the panel. Why is Mac McClung not playing for the Lakers when he's better than all the guards on their team no, and better than not. 90% of the guards in the league? No, what he does is not. he have to that's do? That's just that's no, that's probably no. a family member watching the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's probably Mac. Yeah, thanks for the ten dollars. Right, right. It could be ninety percent. He just make sure not to bet on your unders. Just make sure you know, <laughs> swipe, 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 but a family member going to say sixty. You know what I'm saying? Sixty percent of the league. He said ninety. Right. That's Mac McClung right there. Good luck, <laughs> right. Yo, hey, shout out to Mac. Hey, that's Mac game though. If that's Mac McClung, wait a minute, bro. Wait a minute. I said that's Mac McClung. Yo, you got some bread? Put more than ten dollars down on that. Mac McClung, just come on your show and self-promote yourself. 
Last I checked, Mars, he won the belt contest. They were, oh, they yeah, he did, he did. Yeah, 20 bands. Like 20 bands. He, he blew that before he left the city, Chill Town. It was party in the market. You for the I think so. Hmm. I was hey, man. Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Ron. Go ahead, Ron. Black go ahead. Mamba said, man, with well, how these, with, with how weak the East is already, now these injuries making it even weaker. Tatum had the best team two years in a row and now got three all-star level guys and mm. two elite role players around him. Mm. Come on, Kobe. Okay. Uh, I, see I don't think I the see. East Look is up. weak. I, I don't up. think the East is weak, bro. They keep saying the East is weak. Like, the Knicks, they are a tough out. And went for anybody, East, West, wherever you want to play. Would the Knicks be a top six team in the West for you? Yeah. With that injuries, uh, maybe not. But I see what's happening. If, if Boston loses now, oh my God, Jason Tatum's a fraud. How'd he lose? And then mm. if they win, oh, well, the East was trash. He's on a bomb squad. And he, and he was on a bomb squad too, Mark. I see, I see what we're doing. We're just spr we're sprinkling yes. on the, yes, if he wins, it doesn't matter. Mm. And if he loses, oh my God, he's the worst player. Yeah, he's on a bomb squad. I see what's Can't happening. Lose. I see what's happening. Okay. Can't we're setting lose. up Jason Tatum that nothing he does in the playoffs matters. Okay. I see. Uh, Culture Saunders said, make the chat great again. Bunch of eaters in the chat. Mm. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> chat, y'all catching criticism. That's crazy. Yeah, all right, y'all. Um, <laughs> it's about that time to go ahead and talk about the second playing game last night. We had the Bulls and we also had the Atlanta Hawks. Need to hear you guys' takes on this game. Mars, I'm gonna start with you. Kobe White, man, most improved player. I've been pushing most improved since. Well, he was the most improved player. I don't know how long it's been. But, yeah, Kobe White's the most improved player in the NBA. I think the most improved player award is made for guys like Kobe White. I don't think it's made. I mean, Tyrese Maxey has improved. I'm not, taking, I'm not taking anything away from him. But I think it's made for guys like Kobe White, Jalen Johnson, Dante DiVincenzo, those type of guys who actually took a jump and went from serviceable or bad to really, really good players. So, for me, Kobe White's the most improved player in the NBA. Um Alice Caruso getting her is detrimental to them. And the Hawks are trash. Uh, I mean, uh, everyone else picked the Hawks to win. I don't know why. I, I tried to tell you, Chicago had that Who game. Who picked the, the Hawks to win? Everyone but me. I did. I was the only no, one no, who picked no, Chicago. I, 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 I chose the Bulls. I did. I, I didn't pick on that game. game. But I would yeah, pick yeah, the Bulls. I would pick the Bulls to win that game. Yeah, everyone knows. I don't know what was going on. I don't know why. I chose the Bulls too, Mars. I don't, know why everyone was, I don't know why everyone was picking Atlanta. Like that team hasn't been able to guard anything the whole year, but you think they're just gonna suddenly start playing defense? Nobody. Hey, I, and, and, I and seen Vucevic turn back the clock. Like what the hell? No, nobody's calling Quinn Snyder's trash. That that's funny to me. Nobody, nobody saying Quinn Snyder's an underachiever and he's trash mm -hmm. with all that talent they got on the team. Remember, Trey Young went to the Eastern Conference Finals with that type of oh, roster. Oh no, let's not talk about who Trey Young beat in the Eastern Conference. Series. No, 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 Ticket. The reason why Doc Rivers, ticket. The reason why Doc Rivers gets the criticism that he gets is because the history that he has. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying. Hold what, what kind of what kind of history does Quinn Snyder have? Ticket. What kind of history does Quinn Snyder have? Here's my point to you, bro. What kind of history does Quinn Snyder go question for you? Here's my point to you. Y'all don't give other coaches the same smoke. I didn't hear nobody come in here and say Quinn Snyder was trash with this roster. He could have did more with this roster because I know one thing. They up and fired a coach who's a damn good coach and a damn good reputation. And I'm talking who? about a guy who used to coach Nate, out there in Nate, 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 And I'm Nate, talking about Nate, Nate McMillan. They railroaded his ass. There, there, there are reasons why he got fired that were not about the basketball court, though. No, no, no. But no, what, no. It was about basketball because he had an issue with Trey Young because Trey Young didn't want to do what he wanted him to do as far as basketball and the rules were, were pertaining. Trey Young wasn't listening to what, his, what he wanted from his schemes. Trey Young wanted to do what he wanted to do before. Welcome not to the practice. superstar having say in the locker room. I mean, that's, hold on. But that's, hold on, but that's my point. That goes, hold on. But that goes back to, to what I'm saying to you. That's why I said I put mo the most accountability, bro, on the players. Because real talk, you I know agree. this, right? Mm -hmm. The players control everything with the salaries now. Uh, them players that's getting all that money, bro, they are talking and they're the ones that's controlling teams. So when you see guys ignoring the coach, going out, overcalling plays, doing what they want to do, bro, sometimes the coach may say some player may do something else. You can't blame the coach all the time, Swipe. So all Who I'm saying is why is all the time? Ticket, hold on. Ticket, hold on. Ticket. No, no, you, no you, you hold on. You hold on, Red Velvet. Listen. I have been telling you repeatedly that I am not one of the dudes just to blame coaches. It's about your superstar or your star. They all droppers in the playoffs, including Doc Rivers. They are all droppers, including Embiid and Doc. 
So they're all on the list. They're all on the hit list. Every single one of them. None of them. None of them is by themselves. So Doc Rivers is a part of that. So that's what I'm saying. Like, don't stop making it seem like I'm just talking Doc. And B is a dropper in the playoffs. And so is Doc Rivers. They both are in the same boat. You think the dropper boat? Two things could be true. Hey, Ron, did a Jabroni just say something crazy to me? Let me no, say this to you, Ron. I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to this dude right here, right? Because I, I see right now this is big time against small time, right? So let, let me say this. Wait, to you, right? wait, who's so, who's so, so because you are on my who's show, I'm the one building show from day one. You're on my show officially. You got <laughs> you just came in off the bench to hold it down for me. It's hard. It's hard to saw somebody while else's small time is big time. You can't distinguish who's who. Suspension for kicking ass and taking names. Now let me say this to you right here, right? All my point is to you guys is this: Draymond Green. I mean, excuse me, not Draymond Green. Uh, the coach for the Atlanta Hawks. Wrong team. The coach. Hold on. The coach for the Atlanta Hawks, bro. If you guys are gonna get Doc Rivers criticism, who's already won a world championship, who's won a thousand games in his career, done all these things. Quinn Snyder, who came from a team in Utah that had a defensive player in the year, that had a dynamic score in, in, in Donovan Mitchell, that had great role players and great pieces, that constantly underachieved. Then he came to a team that went to the Eastern Conference Finals with Trey Young, and that team has quickly digressed under his watch. For him not, for nobody not to come out here and say his name, period, in the analysis of what's gone wrong with that team or that game last night, to me is unfair. It's unfair because you have Trey Young, who was the All Star in the league. You keep bringing you have, up Trey Young as if he hasn't been disappointed. No, no, no. But just, hold on, I'm not finished yet. And you then John Shea Murray. Roles. They weren't beating the Bulls. The Bulls are a better team. Take no, but I, you're not listening. You're not listening to what I'm saying, bro. I'm saying that those guys they had on their team underachieved this entire season. Not, I'm not talking about just one game. I'm talking about the entire season under this coach. But nobody, he has gotten zero smoke for that. But, 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 but Nate McMillan. With Trey Young, and he didn't even have DeJounte Murray on that team. He went to the Eastern Conference Finals. Now, you can say however you want to say how he got there. But we all know that that team was better. And my problem is, is this dude has been able to slide from the Utah situation to this situation where he's had How players. is he sliding? How did he slide? Nobody's, talking, nobody's giving nobody He got fired. Who, no, nobody's no, giving him no, any Ticket, here, here's the Doc thing Rivers with you, Ticket. Fired. Ticket, let me tell you something, Ticket, because I think you are you have a, you have a level of intelligence I appreciate. But I want to say this: a part of your level of intelligence is knowing how to, to, to fugazi your way out of arguments. The issue is Quinn Snyder ain't a top fifteen all time coach on the NBA's top seventy five list. We don't care about Quinn Snyder like that. Doc Rivers is considered one of the fifteen best coaches ever, and I don't think he's one of the fifteen best coaches ever. Nor does the resume speak for that. But if they agree with that, then I'm going to say Doc Rivers is held to a higher standard than Quinn Snyder. Then so, Quinn about, Snyder. Okay, so, but, no, hold on, no, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, good sir. Because if you are big time, I'm small time, you deserve more criticism than I do because I just got here. So if you got a bad take, if you mess up and you fall apart for the next several weeks, there's going to be more criticism on ticket than me. I'm nobody. I just got here. I've been here for two months. But if you, Mr. Legacy, if you, Mr. Ticket, if you, Mr. Ticketmaster, if you, Mr. StubHub, if you start dropping takes over the last three weeks, they're going to be looking at you funny and say, where did the real ticket go? Ticket's a dropper. Whereas me, I'm just coming up in the game. So I don't get that same level of criticism. That's the way it works. Ron, who you. in the blue hell does this biggest piece of trailer park trash think he's talking to? Now, let's get right to it because I'm going to cook his ass three the hard way. Like I said, when you talk about top ten coaches, when you talk about greatness, when you talk about being at the elite level, which I am and you're not, you're small time, I'm big dog, men lie, women lie, them numbers don't, baby. That's why the big dog is back in the building. You better believe it, young fella, or should we call you swiper, sniper, or it doesn't matter what the hell your damn name is. So anyways, let me get back to it. Doc Rivers, other top 10 coaches, NBA history, none of those other top 10 coaches get the criticism of Doc, but only five of those coaches have won multiple championships. Don't want to hear none of your foolishness. Don't want to hear none of your crap. If you're not going to keep it 100 all the way across the board with these other coaches that have had talent, with other coaches that have overly succeeded with that same talent or more, I don't want to hear about legacy or where he's ranked or this, that, and the third. Quinn Snyder has rolled under the radar. He has went under the radar in a situation to where he took a team and it got worse. No. These are facts. Since he no. took over the Atlanta no. Hawks, the no. Hawks got worse. No. That's not ticket. facts. No ticket. Here's the, the problem that we have. Here's the problem that we have with your logic. Okay. Number one, you're leaving out a lot of points. So number one, that 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 21 series against the Atlanta Hawks and the in the in the Philadelphia 76ers, he clearly got out coached. One way he got out coached 
was Doc Rivers kept Seth Curry in the game when he was clearly getting hunted by Kevin Herter. Didn't take him out of the game, kept him in the game. That's a coaching in-game adjustment that Doc did not do. So now what we're going to do. I ain't talking about Doc. I'm talking about Quinn. I'm talking about Quinn. This is the point that I'm making. Quinn, this is the point that I'm making. He clearly, he, he clearly didn't make that. In, he didn't make that in-game adjustment. He did not do that. So now fast forward the next year. This Atlanta Hawks team is not the same team that it was the year before that. They did not, they did not improve when the Eastern Conference improved. And then the next year after that, when Nate McMillan got fired, he's got a bunch of kids on his team with Griffin, with this kid um Johnson, with um, he's got a bunch of kids with Trey Young and Bobby and Gal 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 Gallinari, who's Gallinari was gone. So this team was not the same team as it they was when Quinn, Snyder got this, when Quinn Snyder got this crew. So it wasn't the same crew. So you leaving stuff like that out of it. He got, hold on, hold on. Matters. Quinn Snyder, Quinn Snyder, here's why you're lying. Quinn Snyder inherited a better team. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He inherited a better team. He, he inherited a team, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But let me answer your question. He got a dude that all you guys was crying that the Lakers should trade everybody to go get, and that's Jontae Murray. That's one. So that's the damn lie. So that's one right there. A dude that you guys propped up and praised and said he was his elite guard at his elite level. That they, 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 the Lakers that? traded it, all it, those guys. Shout out to DeJounte because he bought no, out last night too. Which, which, which African American? Nobody, 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 said, that that there. There. nobody said that. Nobody said that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nobody said that. I'm talking about Chill Town said. I never said that. I never said that. That's a lie. Because hold on, I never said that. All I'm saying, all I'm saying to you is this: this man had talent on that team, bro. He underachieved with the talent. He had okay, him. He had hold on. Hold on. He had him. He also had the, he had, he had Trey Young, Dejounte Murray. He also had shooting. He had Bojanovic, a guy that a lot of people like to be a role player on their team. He also had Clint Capella on that team. Yeah. He also had he he, he also had uh, yeah. Sadiq Bay on that team who yeah. was playing solid. Yeah. He underachieved, bro. And not hold on. Well, not only in Atlanta did he come mm -hmm. underachieved, mm -hmm. he underachieved in Utah when he was going in the, in, in the NBA playoffs as a top three seed. Yeah. He underachieved. And nobody called him out on his coaching. And he had great players. He had a okay. defensive player of the year. So, so, he had great role players. And he had a fringe, or he had an all-star level player in Donovan Mitchell. So all I'm saying to Swiper is this. This ain't about legacy. This is about excuses. My point is, is that if we're going to hold Doc and say Doc, 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 when we see these other coaches not getting it done, why are we not holding these other coaches accountable? So we want, so we, okay, so take it, so we want. Chill, 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 I'm sorry, oh, oh, oh. chill. Well, chill, can I ask you a question as you lead into your point? Has Quinn Snyder ever coached Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, any of those kind of players, Tracy McGrady, any of those players, Joe Owen, no, James not. Harden? No, okay, not. I just want to make sure. Chris Paul, no, Blake, Blake, Blake Griffin, he, I just want to make sure. What is James Harden going without Doc? Yeah, he had How many series Tracy McGrady went without Doc? Zero. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cook your ass. Zero. Tomorrow. You ain't How cooking nothing. Right, 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 right. No, 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 no. Hold no, on, let him go. Let him go. Chill. Let him. Let him. He keeps let, saying. Let, he keeps saying Doc, but all the dudes he keep naming ain't done shit. And then when I asked him, when I asked this Jabroni, if you put James Harden from last year and changed him with Jamal Murray, would the result be different? He shut his mouth. He knew I his role and shut his damn mouth. You know why? Because, because, because he don't good. think he. Hold on. He don't think James Harden is that dude. So if he don't think James Harden that dude, he need to sit down and shut the hell up. I literally said they the because he's playing because next to a real true. superstar. Wait a minute. So what, what we're leaving out is, oh, one, true. number one, uh, number one, Ticket, you called me a liar. Actually, you're lying. How do I know you're lying? Because in 2021 in the Western Conference semifinals, after Ty Lue out-coached Quinn Snyder, what, did that, what was the logic on Quinn Snyder? He got out-coached in that series. That's number one. Then you fast forward. This team did not improve when the Eastern Conference got better. Brooklyn had gotten better. Not only did Brooklyn get better, the Celtics got better. The Miami Heat improved. All of these teams improved. Meanwhile, the Atlanta Hawks have a bunch of kids on their team. A.J. Green, Cam Reddish, Kevin Knox. The guys who actually aren't improving, by the way. They're not panning out. Meanwhile, the Eastern Conference is getting better. And you want me to you want me to you want me to you want me to criticize Quinn Snyder when Doc Rivers has James Harden and Joel and B. Are you serious McMillan right now? McMillan won more games. That's my point. With the diminishing talent, McMillan was still winning fifty percent of the games. This dude got better talent than Nate McMillan and fell off a cliff. That's my point. He couldn't control the team. He couldn't control. He was bought in because Trey Young didn't get along with McMillan. He didn't want McMillan style. So they got him a new coach. The new coach comes in and they get worse. And he's gotten. He's flying under the radar. You don't hear none of this criticism towards these guys. So my whole point is this. And my, the reason why I got mad at Swipe is because what he said about that Knicks and the Sixers series. 
Where he's given now, he's given the Sixers the pass if they lose against a team that's missing their second best player. Yeah, but what this got to do with last night, though? What do you mean? When you owe me my money? What, what this got to do? What, what this got? Pay that Jaylen. got to do with last night. Pay, pay Jalen. No, 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 no. Pay Jalen. I thought they officially <laughs> owe me my money now. That's why last night sealed it. Mars and Ox, can you tell me? Can you can you talk to me about last night's game? Ox, go ahead. You 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 stepped in. Go ahead. You got it, Mars. You got it, Mars. I already oh, said Kobe, Kobe White's the MIP. You know? Everything else, the game, the game's irrelevant. I, I, I don't care. Other than giving Kobe White praise and hoping <clears throat> Caruso is okay. I agree. I you think Kobe White wins it, bro, over Tyrese Maxey? No, Tyrese Maxey's going to win yeah, it. I think so. You go up to 26 points a game, you're you going to win it. It's just how it goes. But by the definition of the most improved player, I think it's easy. I agree. Kobe White. You think DeBar should be clutch player of the year, too? I don't know. I don't know. The M is him, Steph, SG, or Yoke. It's the top four. I see. I see the Steph's clutch numbers circulate in Twitter. They look pretty good. Yeah. So Demar had two less games played, seven, nine less points, uh, nine less points scored. He shot fifty percent from the field, forty-seven percent from three, and eighty-seven percent from the line. And the Steph Curry was averaging, uh, well, had nine more points, but he was average. He was shooting forty-six percent from three on crazy volume in the clutch this year, and fifty percent from the field as well. But he has like a plus twenty-five. Demar's like was like a plus eighty. Over the course of the, and then obviously you know leading the second best uh, net rating. If you're, the clutch, if you're the clutch player, if you're the clutch player of the year, shouldn't you be winning more? If you if you think about who's the clutch player of the year last year, yeah, the year top. I agree. Team, right? Steph Curry's so, not in the playoffs. We, we shouldn't be talking about Demar Derozan. We shouldn't be talking about Steph Curry. We should, we should not be, be Shane Joker. People. I know. I yeah, agree. We're, we're we're without, without without Steph's performances in the clutch, they're probably below Houston. Like, Let's just say I, for the sake of okay, Mark. I can't hold it against Steph that his team is so bad that they need him to show up in the clutch, and even when he does, they still might lose the game. So if they're okay, Mars, if they're below Houston, they finish what a game above Houston. No, <clears> below <throat> Houston means they'd be the 11 seed, and we'd be the 10 seed. But like, I think I, play I, I can't, right? I can't remember. I can't remember the exact numbers because I say I just see this on Twitter. Right. I yeah, but it was something like it was something like Steph's true shooting in the clutch was like 69, but something. there's two, there's still and the rest of the team was like 49. Like the rest of the team can't do anything, but uh, but I guess for me though, like if, if we're doing that, I mean, Yoke has a 69 true shooting as well, and they're the number one plus team in the, in the league though, at the top hey. of the conference. Hey, like, I, I, I'm not arguing against. I don't. I don't know. Like I'm going. Oh, and you know, SGA shooting from what I've seen on from the field in the clutch this year too, which is and I also think regard. and and also like what, what are we talking about? When we talking about so what? Is it Mars? Who's eighty percent from the field? No, he's shooting fifty eight percent from the field. Oh, SGA. 58. Oh, hey, hey, question. Really I do nice. have one. I have one last question for you. Uh, up, if Doc Rivers does win the championship this year, what, what, what do you say? Uh, that the the NBA got hurt at all levels uh, across the board for every team. See, so every this team. Is why, hold on, but my brother, <clears throat> this is why I say that it's not respectable how you guys you know talk because every year in the every year in the NBA is injuries along the way. Some team got fortunate because somebody player got hurt. Every single year happens the same way. So for me, it's unfair if you say all these things about Doc. He comes and wins the championship I, this year. I, I've what? told you about. I've said him be to you multiple times. I don't think it beats like that. I don't no, think no, he's no, 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 but no, I'm saying, no, but I'm saying if he, I'm saying if he does, which you don't think he's going to do, like if he wins the which chip, which he will not do. Well, I'm, I know, but I'm asking, no, I'm asking you, if he does win the chip, how will you, will that change how you feel about him? But ticket, if you were to win an argument with me, it wouldn't change how I feel about you. That I've means you had luck that day. With you. All right, cool. Well, you Doc Rivers, you Doc Rivers, so you can be Doc Rivers. I got, I'll be I got a closer. championship, you don't. <laughs> so What's I can lose three more series. I won't. I got a championship. What's your championship? <laughs> What's your championship? Where's it at? Where's your rings? Where's your rings? Right. Look, you know, look at you know, look at the comments. Kids, look at the comments. What about the comments? Look, look at the numbers. That's how you get the Ron, ring. Look Ron, at the donations. Fact, I, I don't even have a difference. Look Ron, at the, I look dare, at the, I dare you put a I'm poll. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the heat from you. I'm feeling the heat from you. I'm feeling the heat from you. What you want me to put a poll up? I want to say, I want to listen, listen, take it, listen. I want it to be fair. I want an unbiased poll. Who has won today's argument between? Ticket. You think, hold on, you think over here it's gonna be an unbiased poll over here? <laughs> so wait, <laughs> crazy but, 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 but hey, chill, chill, been, hold on, chill. Wait, 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 he's been, I, he's been here. All all he's all been here. Respect, I'm, I'm, I'm all all newbie. Respect. I've, I've been, been here for a year. I've been here for a year and a half and never been a fair poll for me. So that's what all due respect. A fair poll. I'm hated. Hold on, I'm hated over here. Ticket. 
ticket. People, people, people have been, even when I first got here, people were saying, like, oh, is this the new ticket? I don't, bro, I, we're not even alike. We don't even have the same basketball philosophy. And they were saying that. But, ticket, you've been here. So people love you. You are stamped. That's not true. That's I'm not earning true, my stripes in this I'm space. I'm the most hated person the on the network, bro. That's What's the poll up? I want to see what I want to see what I want to see what it is. That's factually untrue. I want to see what it is. I'm curious. Right, but that's factually untrue. I'm the most hated person over here, bro. And that's a fact. How are you well, the you, most hey, hated? You, you we had a dude. Me. No, no, no. Look, 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 not, not, not only the most hated, but also the most. Yes, yeah, right, when you go, but, up, but, right, but when you go, we off. literally had a dude right. that said K Cunningham was the reason why the Detroit Pistons were losing in trash, and his argument was his vort was lower than the rest of the people in the draft class. <laughs> When you can be you are not the most hated. When you can be gone somewhere for two and a half months. And every single day, people are saying in the comments that you're garbage, you're garbage, you're not even there. That's hate, bro. That's hate. Hey, Sway, what was, hey, bro, I Swipe, what was, what was, what was his argument, Sway? He said he was like 14th in VORP in his class. He was right. He could. Come on, you bro. guys are haters. Respect VORP. Come on, bro. <laughs> You, you really think I'm going to get a fair shake over here? You just don't know, dog. All right, so the, the poll is up right now. While you going to vote on the poll, slap oh, that man. like button. And also, too, <laughs> while you at it, scan the QR code that's right here on the screen. Go check out www.playerschoicemerch.com. Grab you something nice and grab your mama something nice while you at it, too. Um, shout out to that everybody that's in here. That VORP shout is out important, all of our new yo. members. Shout out Tickets VORP. <laughs> and shout out everybody else's plus hey, and hey, shout, out to, shout out to my boy Anthony Goods y'all had on here yesterday. We had the same age. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Anthony yeah, Goods yeah. from Switch Culture, man. I know that, bro. Yeah. Y'all, when y'all pulled him up, I was like, damn, y'all got eight Goods up here? We had the same age. So shout mm-hmm. out to that brother, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's it was cool. a good episode yesterday. Shout out to everybody that tuned in. If you missed yesterday's episode, go back and check it out. Uh, Before we get into this Knicks, in Sixers preview, and also stick around because we're gonna preview the Lakers and the Nuggets too. But I gotta read some of these super chats. Gotta gotta get the people their money's worth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laflame said Swiper is WM forty top WM? five all time. Who's who's WM forty? No, WrestleMania forty top five all time. Like this past oh like, oh oh, oh I have 40. no I. I, I I, I fell off after the attitude error. I'm good. So I, I can't answer that for you. I heard good right. things. Once once Edge took Lita, took Lita uh away from uh from uh yeah, I'm, I was off. I'm done. I'm I was cool. That was the ticket. Are you in the wrestling? Yeah, man. That did you He's hear the, the real life story? Yeah. No, but did, did you hear the real life story <laughs> yeah. that with Lita hey, with Lita Edge disgusting. and the brother and Matt Hardy? And then and then Vince made him do a sex scene in the ring in front of everybody, like. And they and they was real, Ron. And they they was was real, real in real Ron. life. Edge they took real, Lita real from life. Matt that's Hardy, bro. They had partner. real beef. That's your real partner. Smoke. And you and in real life, you took his chick, and they made it into a real storyline. Nah, bro. I, I was I was good. I'm done. I couldn't do that no more. I was I was I was too much for me as a child. <laughs> yeah, I was a child. I, agree, I, didn't, I didn't need to be living that. I agree. Vince McMahon had to sell tickets for Vince McMahon had to sell getting that girl snatched in real life and in the storyline. In front of everybody, too, Ron. Not, not just in real life. In front of everybody. Hey, I'm not Mars, just, like, you're not really even that big of a scumbag anymore. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm yeah, saying, though, that, that like way, that way you, don't gotta, you don't got to do no acting. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, <laughs> that's, good, that's good production. That's good production. But, but Ox, they, you had, you got, you got things, they had to do real saying, scenes together, together though, Ox. I'm saying we don't got to do no acting, though. No, no. we we I'm smoking for real, but we not about to throw no play hands. I'm throwing hands, Ox. It's about real, to be real, real blood out here. Well, real, hey, Vince know what he was doing. <laughs> yeah, All right, so Dr- Drink More Water said, why does how good or bad the eighth seed is matter? Isn't that the privilege of being the first seed? You got to play the worst playoff team in your conference. But that's not true nowadays. Nowadays, you can throw it out the window with the play-in. And not only with the play-in, you can throw it away with injuries. Injuries are messing teams up. Like the 76ers ain't no seventh seed. Miami shouldn't be an eighth seed. Those teams at least should be a fifth seed or better, both of those two teams. So now you're not getting a real seven for eighth seed like you used to get. So that's the difference. Uh, Orlando Snow said, respect Batoon. Curry Doc loses that game last night. Yeah, sure does. Batoon Batoon doesn't Batoon Curry. Go crazy. That's that game is a wrap. Batoon Curry. Mm, a wrap. Batoon Curry. A comma goes a long way, Orlando. Nah, I mean, it's what the hell is Curry Doc? 
<laughs> I, I mean, that's I'm just, gonna stop it's, just, way. it's just common sense. I mean, I you don't need the common to understand. Batum made a bunch of threes. Batum Curry, Curry Doku is not anything anyone's ever heard of. Like, just, I've never heard of Batum together. Curry either. Yeah, but you can you can use deduction to figure out. Oh, the guy who made a lot of threes. A comma. Man, that's so, so I understand. I understand. I, I, I didn't think it was that hard to understand, but I guess I guess uh, punks, a punks, ticket, punks, somebody somebody in the chat said, matter, y'all. Somebody in the chat said you James Harden from the Sixers um today. That's that's your performance today. I mean, bro, they can say whatever. Been empty in game seven. Like I said, they watching, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Also, the poll is running right now, too. It looks and swiper is running the poll 63 to 37. But ticket, I said up to this point. So you still got a whole hour and a half to you know. I'll no, run it close to the end of the show. I'm out five minutes. Ah, oh, man. That's right. Dang. He led managing. Learned but managing. I'm gonna say this to you. Now, I ain't no load managing. I got other <laughs> things to do. But I'm gonna say this, right? I'm gonna, I'm just gonna tell y'all this. You have to be something, and I ain't just trying to be. I'm gonna be honest with you. You have to be something that really. It's great heels. It's 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 great like good guys and it's great heels. Mars is a great good guy. And I'm, I guess I'm a great heel because, like, when I'm gone for two and a half months and every day, every single day, people are just talking, like, crazy shit about me in the comment section. And, and I ain't even here. That just shows you how great you are that people still going to talk about you even when you ain't nowhere around and you ain't even touching the show. So I appreciate all the people that talk down on me anyway. So it don't matter. Just show you where, what it is. And like that's, I said, yeah, that's proof that that's proof that LeBron is so great too, because you just be talking about him when he ain't even. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that's proof that LeBron is great too. Hey, Shout to LeBron, man. The reason, the reason, the reason, the reason I want to talk about that is because guys like Chill Town. That, that's the only reason. <laughs> yeah, but, Tiki, but why you still here? I got some. I got I got some super chats for you, Ticket. Why you still here? Jay Clip said, Ticket, you be making all these excuses for Doc. He won one onion ring, but got more three one losses than any coach in NBA history. Only 3% of the coaches in NBA history have won a championship. Three. 3% of NBA coaches in NBA history have won a championship. That's a great Doc stat. is one of those 3%. That's a great and only, and only And only 7% of those coaches have won 1,000 games. Doc is one of those 7 uh, percent. Doc is going in the Hall of Fame, no question whatsoever. Nobody says anything about Lenny Wilkins. Larry, Larry Brown coached 30 years in the league. You know somebody else that they never complain about? That dude over there in Indiana coaching right now. Nobody complains about him. He's only won one championship. He's coached 25 years in the league. Don't forget, ticket. By the way, that that Dallas team after they won the NBA championship, they didn't mm-hmm. get out of the first round again. Right, well, they, and they nobody ever complained about that. Nobody complained about that for ten nobody years, bro. The swiper. They blew ten the years up. until they got. I, I I think they got Luca in but what? You know, that was that was an seven years later. That was like an aberration too. And it's and it's swiper. Really, really is swiper going to call out Mike Malone? If he never wins another championship and coaches like 15 more years in the league, do you, but do you know? But do you know why he's going to win multiple championships? But I, ain't, I'm saying, I know, I ain't, no, no, you I'm, ain't, I'm, I'm asking you. You ain't answered the question. Do you know Are why you gonna he's hold going Mike Malone to. to the same standard? Because Mike Malone they, was a failure too. He was a failure too before with, he won that who? chip. With who? Who is he? Failing with who? With? He was getting ready to get fired. Well, why was he a failure? I'm trying to understand. He he was coaching injured rosters to 48 wins. He had improved his win profile in every single year. They made the Western Conference Final when everybody was healthy. And as soon as they got healthy again, they went 16 and 4 in the playoffs. These so I'm same pretty things, sure he's those same things you said, yeah, was the same things about Doc Rivers. He coached no, no, Kyle good, Leonard, good. the most injured player in NBA history for almost. Nope. Nope. He, co- he coached Paul George, one of the second most hurt players. Oh my gosh. And then, and then again, like I said, bro, listen, bro, we can do this all day. I just want to make sure that you keep that same engine. Now, I do think they're going to beat the Lakers. But y'all know y'all better not lose game one or game two. That's all I'm gonna say to you. Wait, what are you picking the series in? Can I, are you gonna no, be I'm picking I'm picking Denver to bro, y'all don't beat their ass eight times. Are you picking row. Denver to win? Like everything? Of course. No, no, no. Well, I'm not picking Denver to win. No, he's he's picking the Bucks, but he's picking Denver to be yeah, the Bucks. Yeah, I'm Lakers. picking the Bucks. You got the Bucks? Yeah, y'all yeah, he yeah. Got, or the, or the, or that's, or that's, that's a smart right. nigga right there. Right. He's picking the Bucks. Bucks. You see, and, and you see, look, you see, and, you see, and, you see, and, 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 and I'm going to leave you like he this. doesn't I'm talk about, like, he does not, like he does not address any panel member that way except for tickets. If your that team makes it to the finals, man. and my team makes it to the finals, and I'll address you as a smart nigga. Why do you call him an N word and nobody else, though? I'm trying to figure out because he's a smart nigga. Oh, that's crazy! I don't hey. take it. I don't. I don't think you that way. By the way, I think you're smart because of who you are. He's. I, I, I'm not. I, I faced some colorism the other day on here. Ticket. Now don't ask Chill what happened. I asked for a hoodie, and there Chill blew it up into something didn't need to be blown up into. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. Hey, I'm not, I'm not gonna regurgitate the information, Ox. 
But you know what he said, Ox. You heard him. I actually, I actually respect Swiper because he actually fight back. You know what I'm saying? He ain't not whining <laughs> like some little babies. He actually fight back. I like that. You know, so Rock doesn't like people that lay down and cry like these bunch of Cody Crab babies in the comment section. It's always complaining. Oh, wait, so you, why wait, you, you think you're the Rock? Back? They brought you me the back because I'm the damn man. That's why they brought me back. No, you know, you know who you are. You're the, you're the, you're the, you're the man from X Factor that wore the, that wore the tight pants that would do the gestures when Triple H was walking out. That's that's who you are. You're the extra. You're the extra part of X Factor. I was, te I was telling them that if you, if we got two words for you. That's what I was telling them. <laughs> hey, Ron, let me get my prediction on that series before I go though. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, like I said, I got Philly. I got Philly in that series, bro. I think Philly again. I just think that Joel Embiid, even if he doesn't play like a great offensive series, I think his attention, the fouls he's going to draw, the way he's going to be able to control the game just from drawing fouls and getting fouls, grabbing rebounds, and getting the big men that they have in trouble. I don't think that the Knicks have enough outside of Julius Randle to win that series. I don't. And I like the Knicks. I picked the Knicks. But I, if the Knicks would have had Julius Randle, I would have picked the Knicks in that series. But I think you guys, un, uh, some of you guys undervalue Julius Randle and what he brings to the table, not only as far as rebounding, facilitating with the six, seven assists that he does for other guys on the team, being able to free up uh, uh, the guard play with Jalen Brunson a lot more than what's going to happen now. Now they're going to give Jalen Brunson the AI treatment in the playoffs. And we're going to see if he's able to overcome those double teams and triple teams that's going to be thrown at him. And you're going to depend on Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart and guys like that that have to step up and have monster games in the playoffs when it's all on the wood. So now we're going to see, because I don't think they're going to get out of that, man. I think them losing Randall is going to be big, and, and they're going to come back after the series go with and say, hey, man, ticket, you're right. The Philadelphia 76 have a very good team, man. I picked them to be in the conference finals against the Bucs, but they're, they're, the way it lined up, they're going to play the Bucs early, but I just think that they got a very good team, man, all the way across the board. They got minus James Harden. With the guys they got now, I like their team better than I like the last year. How many teams do you think in the Eastern Conference can win a championship this year, though? Philly, oh, the Bucks. Man. Oh, oh man. I'm tell you, I'm t listen, Philly, the Bucks, and the Celtics all have potential to win a world championship. I would say Miami, but Jimmy's hurt. You know that uh, Giannis is beat up too, right? Ticket. He's coming back. I've already seen Giannis play through those situations. So I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really tripping on that. I've seen Giannis play through Are those you situations. expecting Embiid to have his first, like, really good series? No, I ain't saying that. No, no. I'm what I'm saying is this, bro. Listen, even if Embiid plays bad, Damn. when he plays bad, he's still drawing attention. Here's my point. He's well, gonna control do that the fouls in the finals, though. No, no, I'm, no, I'm talking about in the oh, okay, talking about the NBA finals. Yeah, I'm saying win. Like, oh, you gotta well, win. The, hold on. In the NBA finals, let's say they go to the finals and play your Denver Nuggets, right? That's gonna be a hell of a series. That might go to seven. I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> when you look at that series, bro. With the hurt Embiid? That's no, but hurt Embiid wasn't that bro. He came back giving you 29 a game. When? From MB gonna get he, busy, he bro. He clearly isn't one hundred percent though. Ticket. He never's one hundred percent. That's a bad news versus the dude that's always one hundred percent on the other end and yoke. But he still now yoke is going to no wrist injury. Yoke is going to no wrist injury. He still destroys yoke is when he plays him. You have to admit that. Oh. What he give yoke is like forty five or something. No, he gave yeah, forty one yeah, yeah. this time and another one in Philly. Up, oh, sure did. Yeah, yeah he, so he, aver he averages like forty five on Yerkes. That's been he's the nightmare of a series for anybody, uh, bro. And I'm telling you, you're going to see in the first round with the Knicks, bro. That he's going to get 15, 14 to 15 free throws a game. Watch what I tell you, bro. And that's going to control the series is the oh free throw disparity. Watch how many more free throws If you bring me your best player, you say they're controlling the game from the free throw line, hey, shout, has to have No, to I'm just bro. saying. That's how he plays, though. Are you asking me the first thing you brought up. I don't want to watch that. The that's not winning that's, no ring. Go ahead. No, I'm, no, I'm saying. I'm, no, I'm, talking about, I'm predicting that series, though. That series, Joel and B is going to be pump faking and getting all kind of fouls. Because he had more respect on the whistle than Isaiah Hartenstein. He had more respect on the whistle than the other big dude that they got, Mitchell Robinson. Those dudes are not great one on one players. When they win it, when the Knicks win in like six games, what, what would you say? What would you think the reason would be they would win in six games? No, oh, because Jalen Brunson just over overcame every single thing that uh, the coach threw at him. And he's going to double team his dude all series. So if Jalen Brunson is going to be able to overcome double teams with bigger guards on him like Kelly Oubre, who's like 6'6", with a wingspan, and you got those type of dudes where it's going to be harder for him to see over those traps, and then he still has other big guys he can play. He can still go Nick Batum with that too like he did last night. That's a big, long lineup. And let me say this. Yeah, Anthony Melton coming back too. Nick Batum, hey, you know Nick he Batum get down played on the hella defense, defense on Jimmy Butler last night, bro. He didn't get enough Nick Batum played hella fire defense on Jimmy Butler last night. If he can play any kind of defense like that on lesser guys, like Josh Hart, who's not a good one-on-one -on -one scorer, like Dante Givachinko, who depends on you getting him open three-point shots. 
If they cut off the head, the snake, the body will wither, brother. And I, that's all I think is going to happen. I don't think it's going to be because the Knicks ain't a great team. I just think that when you have another player like Julius Randle out who can give you 20, 10, and 7 assists, that's going to hurt you in a series uh, when you're playing playoffs, against another league in, big in man. In the playoffs, Julius Randle No, no, but that? you still – I'm saying, but you still have to – here's the thing. You still have to game plan for him. You're not game planning for him to play I, I know what it is. You know what my game plan with Julius Randle would be? Gap it off. Shoot the ball. Shoot it. Shoot it, Julius. Just for the Shoot record. It. Just for the record, to Ticket's point, Joel Embiid been back for five games, and the five games that he's been back, he's thirty and nine. Thank you. So what's the Good excuse? There is no excuse. But we that's ain't, that's regular that's season good. basketball, chill. We ain't we not doing that no more. I, 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 I just want to put it out there. But you just used the excuse he wasn't healthy, but when he came back, he dropped in thirty a game. Come on, bro. Swipe, but he's not healthy but versus even, a playoff level defense like the Knicks. Swipe up, I don't. Oh, the the Heat played wait. playoff level defense last night. We 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 got he was trying to emphasize three quarters. He was he was he was in the grand scope of things when it came down to it. He won the game for him. You said it yourself earlier. Let me check. You said it yourself earlier. Remember that last to Kelly Oubre. Remember he nursed face the floor. Joel and B carried throughout the fourth quarter. He ended up he ended up six or seventeen from the field. He was nine or ten from the free throw line to take his point. They lost the minutes when he was on the court. Fifteen rebounds. They were getting dominated. 14, 15 rebounds. They were playing small, but. Again, the Knicks are not small, nor are they weak on the inside. That is my point. Watch and they play very physical. And they play very physical too. They're a very physical team. Watch Ron. When we come back after game one, after game one, Swiper gonna come in here and say, "Man, the refs don't took over this series." And I listen. I'm, that's Me? all I'm saying. I agree with Swiper about MB being a playoff dropper. I'm just saying he's going to be able to control the game enough, get to the free throw line, and put guys in foul trouble. That's going to hurt the Knicks. Does Jalen Brunson average the oh, over under? Oh, I'm setting the over under at 27 in this series for Jalen Brunson. Under. What do you think? I got him around 26, 26 points on about 38, 39% from the field. What? Yes. They're going to double team him all series. For dude bro. that can get the bro, multiple listen. spots at will. You got one guy. Hold on. You have one guy you have to focus on, bro. This is almost that's like a how, rerun of the AI 76. That's how playoff offense works, though. You know that. You bro, know that. No, not, no, 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 not no, 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 literally. But hold on, but you're, hold on. But that would, you'd be right if you're talking about any other coach. If you, Look at the coach you're talking about. The coach you're talking about, he believes in pressing full court and trapping all game And Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse yeah, you is go, going to I, trap. Who going to shoot better from the field, Jalen Brunson or Joel Embiid in this series? Mm. Joel Embiid. Good hey, luck. It's white, white room. Good I'm luck. You, he's going to double team. I want that hoodie. If he doesn't double ticket, team, ticket, I want right. that hoodie. If, if, if I'm right about Jalen Brunson, I want you to see you me that hoodie and sign it. I'm going to hang it up on the wall. I'm going to hang it up on the wall. Bro, Another he's L going to <laughs> swiper. He's go swiper. He is going. He is going to double team Jalen Brunson the entire series because that's he how is going to get double team. He's worse at handling double teams than Jalen Brunson is. Who? Embiid will be double you're, team. Hold on, you're the he's same, at handling you're double the same person who just said, Brunson. He, you're, you're the same person that just told Bob that he took this great leap on passing out of double Bob? teams and passing. Who is Bob? Trap under. Big Ox Bob. You just Big told me. Is your name Bob? No, you told Ox that. Yeah, that's Man. him. That's his name. Swipe a Big Ox Bob. Yeah, that's his name. Well, everybody, everybody putting names out today. I, 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 bro, chill, chill. I said Big Ox Bob. Yeah, he cousin, yeah, he cousin from Kobe or something like that. Marge you, is related to like Rooney. Like Ron's over here. He's, yeah, he's no, obviously Dick's so, brother. That, every time Kick can say something, Ron got to say something. <laughs> I'm talking about stuff out here. That's all I'm saying. You told Ox. You told Ox that, and Ox told you he didn't think that, but you said yeah. Or under under this coach. He's a much better passer. No, no, but, did but much that? better one did away passer. One away passer, not, not playmaker. Not playmaker. Not a better playmaker. That's the difference. Brunson's a good playmaker. He's a good playmaker. I'm he, saying he's going to you, a different type, type, of, gonna a different type of double team. Hey, hey, I wouldn't be surprised. And listen, here, here's here's one last thing I'm going to say. When you got a guy like uh, Caboose, Kyle Lowry, guarding you straight up, full court pressing you, and then you got a guy <laughs> like Kelly Oubre Jr. Kyle you got Lowry. A guy like Kelly Oubre Jr. that's trapping. Is that Bro, the best be option you got versus Jalen Brunson, sir? No, I'm saying they're going to be trapping him once he comes across half court. You're going to have Kyle Lowry picking him up full court if he's out there, when he's out there. And then once he comes across half court, they're going to trap him every single time with a guy like Kelly Oubre, who's 6'6 six, six with a wingspan and a good defender, and he's good in the passing lanes. So that's going to cause Jalen Brunson. They're going to make Jalen Brunson have to beat them. by him. They're going to make Jalen Brunson have to make everybody else beat them. So if he can pass out those double teams, I don't know what and those defense other you think you're watching play. with the Sixers right now, brother. But good luck. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. We'll all see. Right. Y'all already know. All hey, right. Susie, all right, ticket. Hey, Susie, we, we gonna hey, catch chill. up with you tomorrow. Uh, uh, Mars. Man, pick your head up, boy.
Mars got the Mars, most hair time Mars, with his hair Mars, down. Mars, Mars is the re ticket. Mars is the reason we run extra suicides in practice because we watching film and Mars in the corner with his head down and he ain't paying no attention. Mars, you, bro. Focus, y'all. Yes, Mar Mars, tell him you too good to have to study film. How the Sixers hey. to defend Jalen Brunson? I heard. Hey, Swiper, don't 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 let chill off the hook like you've been not letting him off the hook. I told him. I called him out for that Tatum nonsense. Kevin Durant and LeBron James are better this year. I'm going to holler at y'all, man. All right, bro. Later. All right. Yo, so I ran the poll. Who's going to win? The Sixers or the Knicks? The Knicks ran. They didn't run away with the poll, but they got about 60% of the votes. But I got to hear from you guys. Swiper, we heard a little bit from you. I got to hear from you, Ox, Chill, and Mars. Mm -hmm. Who's going to win this series? Chill, let's start with you. I think this is a Tibbs type of series. A lot of dirty work guys. A lot of guys who dive on the floor for loose balls. Um, Josh Hart, I feel like he's going to be the X factor in this series. The 76ers do not have a guy who could potentially at the at the guard spot that could get you 15, 20 rebounds. And those are going to end up being a lot of second chance points that the Knicks can capitalize on. Um, having a perimeter player in OG Ananobi who also causes so many problems on the defensive end, I think that this Nick team, I think that they cause a lot of trouble for the 76ers with guys like Tobias Harris, who looked faulty last night against a Miami Heat defense, who I think the Knicks defense is a lot better than them. The idea of trying to blitz Jalen Brunson, I think that's a bad idea because Jalen Brunson is actually really good getting blitzed, and he's actually been making better reads. I don't think that the Sixers have the personnel to continuously blitz him. I think that he'll take advantage of that. Coupled with, I don't think that the Knicks – are going to turn the basketball over as much as Miami did. I think that they're going to create more turnovers because Philly proved last night playing against the Heat that they will give the basketball up. And I think the Knicks, because that's their staple, they capitalize on stuff like that. I think the Knicks can handle Philly in six games. All right, what you got, Ox? Yeah, I agree. I, don't, I think I don't even know if it'll go to six. I think this is going to be <clears> a, a real easy series for the for the Knicks. You think they're they serve them up? Oh uh, yeah, they this mm. this is a good, you know, I, what I seen from Joel Embiid is like he maybe he re, maybe he did retweak his knee that last game like you were saying Morris, or maybe he's just still out of shape. The only thing is it's going the Knicks are going to put too much pressure on him for it, it it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? He's if he's not ready for this series, 70% Joel is not going to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Jalen Brunson is better than Tyrese Maxey. I mean, in, in the Knicks and then the Knicks, the thing about the Knicks right now is kind of like what I said about the Timberwolves with Anthony Edwards not having Cat there. Without having Julius Randle there, it lets some of those other guys play a little more free. You know what I'm saying? Where you can have where you can have big games from Dante, Bojan, um, OG, uh, what's his name, Josh Hart, where they mm -hmm. they're gonna get they're gonna get some more some more shots in the rhythm of the offense as opposed to having Joel and I mean um, Julius Rand Julius Randle with the ball in ISO. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a little bit more free flowing. I think the the Knicks got the best player in the series right now because Joel Embiid is 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 hurt still it's or hampered. just severely out of shape. He's hampered in in some form or fashion. So with that being said, Julie, Jalen Brunson is the best player in the series, and it's a free flowing offense. They're going to play a lot of pressure, play a physical style of defense. Mitchell Robinson and in, in, in Hardenstein down there with Joel, he's not going to have a cakewalk even if he's healthy. So I, I think Knicks in five. Uh, could two things be true? Could his knee, he could have retweaked his knee and he's out of shape? Or oh, certainly, certainly. He's definitely out of shape. That's for sure. Right. It's, that looks horrible face. right now, too. He's it out looks of shape. Flat. Yeah, but he's still, flat. he's still a monster down there. Let's not, you know. He's I'm, I'm not going to argue that. I think when that he, the Knicks. When he gets his big ass down there. I think the Knicks can speed the game up, man, because I watched jo I watched Joel Embiid yesterday, and I don't think Bam ran the floor nearly as much as he should have. Because mm -hmm. I caught Joel Embiid in the backcourt a bunch of different times. Yeah. A bunch of different times. He was at half court running. I'm thinking to myself, yo, with the Knicks, the kind of defense that they yeah, have, with the, with the Knicks with the kind of defense that they have, they can speed the game up. And he, already, get... he, he was laboring the whole game. Like He, he, he was, was, yo. Some of that, he's he a little was. bit of a showman. He's always been a showman, though. Yeah. But, like, he might – he was also legitimately laboring. So – yeah, well, man. Uh, go ahead. Well, swipe it, swipe it. This is the thing I want to say too about about the uh, Isaiah Hardenstein and specifically Mitchell Robinson. One thing I always knew is if I had a guy that was maybe a heavy, you know, a heavier set guy, you know, what I'm saying he can't move as well as me. Um, I'm on the offensive glass. You know, Joel Joel being out of shape, it's going to be you know his rebounding is going to be a little slower getting to the ball, seeing where the ball is going and getting to that spot. Mitchell Robinson is going to be on that offensive glass. You know, that's one of his staples. So that's another issue. 
You know what I mean? That happened yesterday. That happened yesterday when they were on off the, the, the heat were on the offensive glass and right. Joel and B looked slow afoot. I feel right. like if you can run him, I feel like if I feel like more than anything, if you could run him, you could get those guys in you, you could get them in real bad situations. Run Joel and B, make him defend in transition more than anything. And I think that tires him out at the end of games. They didn't do that yesterday with him. They didn't. Bam in particular. Because I saw Mars. a lot of I saw a lot of open rim opportunities for Bam, and they didn't do that. Mars, talk to me about this series and your predictions on what's going to happen and why you think it's going to happen. Everyone knows I had Philly going to the finals. I no longer have Philly going to the finals. Mm. Um, yeah, Joel Joel is not right. He's not. It is what it is. Um, I had faith. Um, he his knee buckled against the Pistons. He came back in the game. That was a good sign. Then he plays the next game against Orlando. Same thing happens. And he just hasn't looked the same ever since that happened. So um, I give him credit for playing. Um, but yeah, the Sixers aren't winning without Embiid being able to be himself. And he's just very clearly not himself, whether that's like he's not in shape and he's not healthy. Those two combined, I don't think they have enough to um, make it to the finals. Now this series is gonna be interesting because Nick Nurse has his little his little um reputation of not allowing stars to play well against his teams. No matter what the other players will do, he will make sure that star player will have two points. He he takes pride in making sure stars can't score. And watching the Knicks and how they operate, Jalen Brunson, one of the most ball dominant players in the NBA, Nick Nurse is gonna do everything in his power to get the ball out of his hands and make the other guys make decisions, make them have to create shots for themselves. Um, it's not going to be just uh, put Kyle Lowry on him and double team him. It's going to be box on ones, triangle and twos, a bunch of different things they're going to start, start throwing at Jalen Brunson that he's going to have to navigate. Do I think he can do it? Possibly. Do I think the Sixers have the personnel to execute it flawlessly with Joel Embiid hampered mobility-wise? I don't know. That's why I don't know who's going to win the series. If I had to pick right now, I'd lean towards the Knicks just because Embiid is just so far from what he needs to be. But I can see the avenue for the Sixers, and that's because Jalen Brunson can't have a mediocre series. And if he does have a mediocre series, I don't think it will be his fault. I'm not going to be like Jalen Brunson's a playoff dropper because I can already see how. Do you think his skill set would even like lend him to having a mediocre series? Like, what do you even think a mediocre series could look like for Jalen? Maybe in that series, um, it would just be it would just be inefficient scoring. The volume, I think, the volume will be consistent because um, they need him to put up points. They like, mm -hmm. their offense falls apart without Jalen Brunson. But um, I think it would just be inefficient. I don't know what his true shooting or whatever is this season. Probably, like, I don't know, 61% or 60%, something like that. I don't know. Um, it, it's just going to drop. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very high volume, lower efficiency. You think, like, maybe six or seven free throws a game for him in this series? It depends on how the refs call it, because the refs be yeah. letting the Knicks get away with a bunch of fouls. So if they let mm -hmm. the Knicks get away with a bunch of fouls, they're going to have to call it both ways like that. Which means it but might you don't have, be a grind you don't have a side of four. I want to see what OG does. Like if he plays a power forward, especially in some of those like maybe Deuce, Dante, Jalen line or something like that. I want to see OG like get an opportunity to swarm. Could OG even versus Embiid? Like one v one at the nail. Like that's another matchup. They'd be letting like, OG hack. So I mean, like right. what? Like that's the thing. It's gonna be the refs are gonna the refs are all gonna dictate this series. Are they gonna give Embiid his best. his fouls that he normally gets in the regular season? Or they is he gonna let the Nick or they're gonna let the Knicks get away with the fouls they clearly commit right. in the regular season? The rest Joel and B should, 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 should definitely take care of that. He should he should definitely take advantage of that matchup if he got OG and an OB on him at the nail. But OG, got, but OG's like Al Horford though, super strong at the point of attack. Super right, I can definitely get with that. But with that being said, with Joel and B, even though he's not who he is in terms of health, if I get him 14 feet away from the basket, if I get him at the mid post. I should be able to take advantage of him. Now, something well, different. Drew, the same thing with Drew Holiday last year, though, remember? They were, they were putting Drew on him at times to because of the center yeah. of gravity. Yeah, I mean, that was... There's, there's going to be help. It's not going to be like, oh, you just leave right. him on the island. Like, you're going right. to have, gonna have Mitchell Robinson in the gaps, Isaiah Hartenstein, mm -hmm. Josh Hart. And it's just going to... They're going to try and block off the lane. And they're going to want... They're going to try and make him be the jump shooter. They're going to... It's going to be about discipline on up fakes, not jumping into his landing space, all of those things. Tibbs is a big practitioner of just disciplined defense. So they're, they're going to try and limit his free throws. The refs are going to let um, the Knicks play physical. So I don't, I don't, 
if Embiid is an Embiid, I have a hard time seeing them able to win. But I also see the way that Nick Nurse is able to scheme stars out of series. But when he has done that, he's had great defensive personnel. This see this which team, he doesn't. I don't know what DeAnthony Melton is. I, I don't think he's going to be available from game one. So you got Kelly Oubre, Nick Batum, Kyle Lowry. They're the only ones who I think you can trust reasonably at the point of attack. And then obviously it's going to be about where you position everyone else in help. How can you use Embiid? Because right now Embiid doesn't leave the lane. Embiid is playing 90s defense right now. No three-second violation. He is not leaving the paint. Right. And every time he does leave the paint, he's looking at his teammates like, why are you making me step out here? We we need to rotate. He's not trying to leave the paint. And Nick Nurse is aware of that. So what is he going to do to make sure that the Knicks don't have an advantage on the perimeter? It's going to be it's going to be a very, very interesting series. I got the Knicks winning, but I can see how the Sixers can get it done. But I'm hoping the Sixers win. I'm I'm putting that all out there. I want the Sixers to win. I want Embiid to be able to wait to play his way into into health and shape. So I want him to have a playoff run, but I got the start. I, 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 I don't I don't love Joel Embiid at the top of the key, always asking for the basketball, neither during a zone when you already got two guards out there. That's not that difficult to guard because when he comes out to the top of the key and he's basically standing in between both Maxi and Kyle Lowry, what he's doing is now he's making that one guy in the zone, he's able to guard two people. And if, if Joel Embiid were to stay in the middle of the zone or Joel Embiid were to stay at the mid post, I think he makes it more difficult as opposed to when both of those guys are there and they're a little bit closer. We do need more spacing. I will say that. We do need more spacing with both Kyle Lowry and Maxi. Not just necessarily shooting, just from a zone offense. That's one of the main reasons why you play. That's one of the main reasons in a zone offense. You get wide to make the zone get wide so you can penetrate the zone. But when Joel Embiid steps in the middle of those two guys, you shrink the zone. You shrink your zone offense and you make yourself you, you make yourself less difficult to guard. So I'm really not feeling Joel Embiid at the top circle like he was last night against Miami. I, I, I like to, but yeah. I don't I, think Joel 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 got to get in that paint this series. He in I don't think Joel's scared to get in the paint. It's more so a matter of whether it's whether a he's lot of bodies in the paint though, bro. They're very but, aggressive and, too. and he's the biggest body. I don't. Ju- but I don't. Not, do not do we classify old. Joel as soft? No, like, that's a serious question. No, that, well, that's well, a serious it's question. Not, it's not. It's not a soft. He's not it's soft. Just, he's he he doesn't. He okay. he's fragile. Well, he doesn't take same, advantage boss. of his what size. He, he's, not the same. he's never taken advantage of his size like that. Never. Even in the best series he's ever had was the Toronto series. I think he averaged like what was it, twenty two, like nine and in, in three, with like four turnovers or whatever. Shot thirty nine percent from the field. He's never taken advantage of his size. He just doesn't have that kind of like <clears throat> game. He's a jump shooter. That's what he does. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think he's soft. I just think he falls in love with shooting the ball. He falls in love with wanting to be out there. And, playing that style of, of ball, but I don't, I've never seen, never thought of him as being soft. I think they should, you know, pound the paint and try to, because the refs have to let him play. This has to be a physical series. If the refs don't let him play, it's going to be a whole lot of fouling out this series. So uh, he, he's got to just dominate the paint. If he can do that, stop, you know, maybe limit his running, right. limit his moving around out there on offensive end a little bit, maybe can sa- save that knee a little bit, just get on the block and work. Why are we talking about the refs, yo? Why, why, why are we doing that? I mean, the, the playoffs in the regular season, sure, the game is more physical in the playoffs, but, mm. I mean, you want me to blow the whistle. Why do you want me to blow the whistle sometime? Like, am I going to blow the whistle or not? Which one is it? I think if there's a foul, they should blow the whistle. But the, right. this season in particular has just been inconsistent. They made their conscious decision to stop calling fouls on drives, and now they're just missing clear fouls for the sake of not giving free throws, which is weird to me. And the Knicks are like, I've never seen a team get away with fouling people as much as the Knicks. So if they're doing that in the regular season, I can only assume in the playoffs it's going to be the same thing but worse. And the Sixers and Embiid being a guy who gets to the free throw line as much as he does, Ma- I think. Maxi too. You know yeah, this, like this is a series that I, this is a series where I think the refs have a huge fingerprint on it. And I'm not saying, oh, the refs got to be better. I'm not doing any of that. I don't care. I'm just saying I think this is a series where the refs are going to have a huge impact on how this series goes. Are they going to call the fouls that that Embiid earns? Or are they going to let the Knicks get away with the fouls that they clearly commit that they don't call? It's, it's, going, to be a, it's going to be a big deal. But, um, yeah. But uh, I got. I think the Sixers got the coaching advantage. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's a positive. But With everything you guys said, I understand Joel's not 100%. And, well, Jalen Brunson is. 
But when I look at these two guys, and let's just say Joel's 80%. Is that fair to say he's 80%? You think no. less than that, Mars? 70. No. 70. All right, okay. He, let's, Joel, let's Joel's words was 70. I think that's optimistic, but I can. I I'll, I'll, I'll listen. I'm going, Mark, Mark, Ron. I'm going as high as sixty. I don't. Th I, I think he's barely at sixty. Like, I, I, I can't. I can't watch Ron, he, in December and look at this and be like, yeah, that's seventy percent. Like, Ron, crazy. he looks like he's laboring. Look like he he got he got a piano on his back. Like this okay, dude. Okay, so is, let's let, let's go with seventy percent then. Yeah, well, even the at seventy percent, I still like Joel Embiid. Over Brunson. No, no. Also, hold no, on. Let me finish no, my statement. Let no. me finish my statement. I said I do. No. I like. No, I I, I'm telling like, you no. I'm still, telling you. I get your imagination. Your imagination, your imagination over is tarnished. Tarnished. But also, your, also your imagination though, is tarnished. Also, also <laughs> too though. Check this out. <clears throat> Jalen Brunson still has to do much more than Joel Embiid has to do in terms of carrying the whole offensive huh? load. No, he doesn't. Of, no, he doesn't. What do you mean? You no, he doesn't. Yourself? Do you hear yourself? So, so, so hold on. So hold on, Mars. And everybody just acknowledged this. You guys Bro, just this, acknowledged that he has Bro, to carry. He has to shoot efficiently. Okay, he, has, he, has to do, he has to do everything on offense. The thing right. about it is Joel Embiid has a Tyrese Maxey that he can lean on. Joel Embiid just, has okay. a Tobias Harris that can step in and do something. Right. Joel Embiid, Harris, I said that can. That can. I said that can. No, he can't. Joel Embiid, if, Joel, Joel, Joel Embiid if, if Joel has, has other... Has hold on, Mars. Hold on. Relax. Relax. I'm not saying that Tobias Harris is going to take over. I'm just saying he has these guys that he can rely on. He has... He he has he has another twenty five point per game score yeah, on his Maxie. team. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm saying. He no, has no, Tyrese no. Maxey. Yeah. He has okay. He doesn't have to buy it. Okay, cool. Okay, he has Tyrese Maxey. Yes. Jalen Brunson has right. to score thirty points per game, and he has to lead playmaking and whatnot. Otherwise, you right. realize okay, what else do they got? Okay, Ron. Go ahead, Ron. With that with that being said, the Knicks team is predicated different. Than what the Philadelphia 76ers team is predicated on. The Knicks team is predicated on defense and dirty work. That's where a lot of their offense comes from. And when they shooting. get in that right, and when they get in the half, when they get in the half court, even Chenjo can knock down the long ball. Brunson knocks down the long ball. Bonyan can knock down the long ball. Right? So they got guys who can shoot and stretch the defense. But their their game, the Knicks are predicated on dirty work, defense, second chance points, and speeding up the game and playing fast. Predicated on their defense, so when the game slows down and they get into a half court offense, they don't necessarily have, they don't necessarily need they're not going to score 120, 130. They don't that, that, that's not where their game is. No, but they but Jalen Brunson can score enough, but they also have enough pieces around him where he can create offense for those guys who can score too. The offense runs through Joel Embiid. With the offense running through Joel Embiid, he does have other guys like to, like like Tyrese Maxey who can score. Sure, he does have that. But with Jalen Brunson, that team is that team is put together different, and with it being put together different, they asking them to do other things. But I, and Jalen Brunson has to literally do everything. Yeah, I, I don't. I think you can't question, and this is a bit like out of left field, but you can't question Dallas and how they use Luca, mm -hmm. and then not question the Knicks for the same reason with how they use Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson is a six-one Luca in how they are using him. Has the ball in his hands all oh, game, oh, all oh, game, Mars. All game no. long? No, Mars. He doesn't get, do nearly yes. as much. He doesn't I, do nearly as much as Jalen. Let's get let's Jaylen get to the numbers. But please, uh, let's, let's let's talk get about to the numbers because I, right, I, I let's, let's, I let's do that. He doesn't do it now. I'm talking now. Now I think that you I think you talking about in terms of buckets. I can get with that. line. Jalen Brunson has but, the ball in his hands more than Luca does, and he has the ball in Lucas. He has the ball in his hands more than Luca does off the strength that what. Off the strength that the Knicks rely on him to have the ball in his hands and create for other people more than Dallas rely on him. Jalen Brunson's time of possession is 8.6. Mm -hmm. Lucas is 8.3. They both lead the league. Trey is right there at 8.32. Right. So Jalen Brunson has the ball. Jalen Brunson has the ball in his hands more than Luca does. The, um, the average amount of time he has the ball per touch is more mm -hmm. than Luca does. The amount of the um the average time he's dribbling. Every right. time he touches the ball is more than Luca. Jalen Brunson is a six-one Luca Doncic, and how so we've established that he has the ball more. Now the question yes, that I'm asking now, more. he's relied now, on to run that Knicks offense more than Luca is. Now, now the question, now the question that I'm asking you, Mars, is what does what does Luca do in that offense that Jalen Brunson doesn't do? 
I mean, he's just better. At he me. gets up right. He gets off the pill more. He's he he throws the ball ahead more, right? When they're, when they're playing fast, he throws the ball ahead yeah. more. No, he creates no offense. He he throws the he throws the he throws the ball ahead more. Sure, absolutely. He gets guys involved more because sure he might sure he might have better offensive players. I can get with that logic. I just want to make sure that I want to make sure that I'm. The point I'm making is you like what you're saying. This is going back to like a different argument, so I understand why like it's kind of weird for me to bring it up now but like you can't question dallas because luca has too much responsibility but then say the knicks are going to be fine when jalen brunson has more responsibility and has the ball in his hands more than luca and dominates the ball more than luca does that's what i'm saying when it comes to um jalen brunson it's not a knock on jalen brunson because I, I think he's a hell of a player i'm just saying right. i think people i don't know if maybe it's because they're not watching or maybe he does it differently and because he's a small guard it's more impressive i don't know but Jalen Brunson is doing everything for that Knicks offense. I, I brought it up the, uh, the other day that they're like the second worst offense in the league when he's not on the floor. Like they are entirely reliant on what he's doing. So Ron is right, right in the fact that Jalen Brunson has a larger larger burden to carry for that for that Knicks offense. And it's because Julius Randle's not there. I'm I'm with Ticket on that, that they need Julius Randle to go far in the playoffs. Even though I have my feelings about how good Julius Randle is, I understand that the Knicks need him. And Jalen Brunson, like a 6-1 guard with that much of a burden... Even if the East is injured and like compromised, is teams can game plan against the smaller guard who has the ball in his hands the whole game. I like I, they I, can. Like, I, think the, I think where the I think where the where the divide is between you and me when we're talking about Luca and Jalen Brunson is the fact is where the production is. Sure, I said that with Luca, the fact that he does so much for them, the fact that he does so much, he shouldn't have to do that much. 35, 17, 12. Like Jalen Brunson isn't producing that, primarily because Luca is better. Sure, primary pri primarily because Luca is better. However, that's where the that that's that's where the divide comes with me because I'm thinking because he's better, and he produces that much, he has better offensive players, so he shouldn't have to do that. Jalen Brunson, on the other hand, he doesn't have the offensive players that Luca has. Not only does he not have the offensive players that Luca has, he's not the scorer that Luca is. So the fact that they rely on him as much as they do, I don't think that that's the same as Luca because of the production. Yeah, but that, that's what makes it more concerning. If if you agree Luca has better offensive weapons and he shouldn't have to do as much, I I'm for the sake of argument, sure, I can agree with that. He shouldn't have to do as much. But him having better offensive players means it would then be harder for teams to game plan against Luca because now you've got a Kyrie, now you've got. Uh, PJ Washington. Now you got Daniel Gafford rolling to them. You got other threats that you have to worry about. So if you do blitz Luca, other guys can make decisions. Mm -hmm. The Knicks have worse offensive pieces and are asking Jalen Brunson to have the ball in his hands more than Luca. And now if you get the ball out of his hands, you've got Dante DiVincenzo, who I think most improved candidate by the way. But Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein, Mitchell Robinson, OG Ananobi, all who have questions as self creators, all who have questions on how they can continue the advantages that he's creating for them. Mm -hmm. Luca doesn't have those questions. So even if you do get the ball out of his hands, Dallas have a better opportunity to score. So what is the Knicks' backup plan to when Nick Nurse is blitzing Jalen Brunson, when he's playing box on ones, when he's playing triangle and twos, when he's um, picking him up 94 feet and making him have to hit hit head passes? What's the Knicks' backup plan to what they can do? That's there is like, no that's backup like, player, Morris. It's that's my go to Jalen Brunson, and you got to get us out this out this. Situation. And that's my concern. No matter what, no knock to Jalen Brunson that I think is going to be difficult for him to be able to do do those things. I don't. I think you could put Pete Steph Curry in that predicament. Well, swipe later, right? brother. Later. Oh, oh, America, see y'all tomorrow. It's going to yeah. be very difficult to do that like that, and that's it goes kind of back to what Becky Hammond said about small guards being the best player on the championship team. Like it's just difficult. You're undersized, and you're the only offensive fo focal point. Teams can game plan against that. Like, is that that's my concern? So, yeah. But shout out to Jalen Brunson, very, very good I, player. Yeah, I wasn't trying to disrespect it. Came I, I'm not trying to either. It's just it, it's it's hard for me to go with the guy. And you guys know I've said this before. I don't I don't like, and it, it, this doesn't have anything to do with the small point guard situation. Even though it's it's true as well. But in the playoffs, it's hard for one guy to specifically carry the load. All the way through. We've seen Allen Iverson do it. We've seen LeBron do it, but that's LeBron. Who else has had the burden of having to do that? One guy has to do and it. Yeah, and and it's, it's, also, it's also different with AI because AI played in a league where the 
overall like offense was just much less efficient. So you could live with AI's inefficiency because the league just wasn't as efficient. Now Jalen Brunson, if Jalen Brunson goes down to Allen Iverson efficiency in a league that's as efficient as it is offensively, like you can't survive. And that's again no knock to Jalen Brunson. It's about the league and the climate in which he was in. Offenses, defense was king in the early 2000s. Now his offense point. has it and defense is whatever, whatever you want to call it. So crazy. AI benefited in that regard to where his offense didn't need to be as efficient as it needs to be today right. to still be able to carry the um, the burden the burden of an offense. Yeah, Jalen Russell is in a tough situation. Like it's a very, there's no knock to him if he loses in round one. Like I don't care if he's a two seed, if they lose this series, I don't want to hear people like, oh, Jalen Brunson is not that guy or he's not that good. I, I think You're going to hear that, Miles. Y'all don't, you, you gotta, don't got to worry about that. He's not losing this series. Like, this, this, I, I, I don't want to explain it. I'm just saying if he does, I just don't want to hear that. If he does, I just don't like, want to hear Like, Ron, Ron, Philly has zero chance in this series, bro. It's You're not, out of your yeah. mind. Yeah, if you <laughs> are out of your mind. Six, bro. Six, I, I, six I, I, games. Bro, I six, Taylor Brunson getting busy, too. Six games will be loved, bro. Six games will be loved. It's going five, Why do you like It's going five. I got Philly in five. You got the Knicks in five. So, but why is there? <laughs> why is there? Yeah, Ox, what, what are you looking at, Ox? When you when they you just say better than them, like okay, not, the team, they because, much better because, than them. I'm getting, I'm getting to, and, and it's not because I said so. It's because it sound like Ox. It, it, it's, it's not. It's not. It's not, it's it's not, better, it's not what I'm saying though. You got a. They got a thirty. They got a thirty and nine guy who's beat up. Yeah, they don't got no thirty and nine guy. No, they don't. Yes, they do. They had a 30 and 9 guy. See, y'all living in the past. And what 23 uh, y'all living, and 15. Y'all living, y'all living in what and 15 used guy. to be. Y'all living in what used to be. See, y'all got to live in today. Right here. You got to do guy. the same with Mitchell Robinson, too. You that's fine. Play that's fine. Him. That's fine. That's fine. That's that's cool. Um, but Isaiah Hardenstein still can, can, can mix it up a whole lot, too. The team sure. is better. Josh Hart. Josh Hart, OG. Bojan, Dante DiVincenzo. We talked about this before. These guys are these guys are going to all average ten plus. You know what I'm saying? Some of them, you know, in the in the series, we're, they're going to have some supporting buckets from other guys. Like, yeah, yeah, he's going to Jalen's going to have to carry the bulk of the load, but he doesn't have to average thirty three in the playoffs. You know what I mean? He can he could come in and average twenty five, and you know, they're going to play defense. They're going to muck it up. They're going to play physical basketball. It's, you know, just kind of what we saw last night. I think we're going to expect to see some more of that with better shooting. You know what I mean? Especially from the three range. Mars, you, you, you brought up a really interesting point about Allen Iverson. And to that point, I mean, you, you can't be inefficient in this era because other teams are efficient. So he could do that back then because – the Milwaukee Bucks were shooting something similar to that, right? Uh, the other teams in the playoffs, Toronto was shooting something similar to that. So you can do that, but when Allen Iverson is shooting 38%, meanwhile, I don't know, Philly or the, the – the, not the 76ers, I'm sorry, Boston, this team is shooting 48% and as a unit, and their best player is shooting over 50%. I mean, you get smoked. You don't have a chance when you're doing that. So I, I, I think that's a really interesting point that you brought that up. But when I think about Philly, I do, uh, Ox, I do think Philly, I don't think that they're better than the Knicks at this point, but I don't think they smoke them, though. I don't. That's where, that's where the, 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 the divide comes with me. Mm -hmm. Because the same thing that you brought up with me, the same thing you brought up with me a while ago when you said, Joel Embiid does not, has not forgotten how to play basketball. Right. So right. off the strength that he's been beat up, he still hasn't forgotten how to play basketball. And you tell me I'm living in the past. Over the last five games, he's 30 and nine. That's where we are with him. So don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't think that he's had nearly as much time to get back. Like I said, if, if you gave me another two more weeks and you gave me a month, I'd feel a lot more comfortable about Philly in this series. But the fact that I don't have that much time, that's a little bit different. The series is going to be physical. And Joel Embiid is going to have to be physical in this series. I think that's going to take a toll on him. I think the fact that with Tobias Harris and OG Ananobi, I think that matchup, OG wins that matchup. I think he causes a lot of havoc on the wing. I also feel like both DiVincenzo and Josh Hart, both of those guys, Josh Hart more is the X factor. But I also feel like the fact that they got Joel Embiid and the fact that they got Maxi, Maxi, Joel Embiid gives those guys more confidence. Just the fact that he's there. Not necessarily his game, but just the fact that he's there I think he gives them more confidence. I don't see them smoking. Confidence, Philly. confidence, is, confidence is cool and all, but like that doesn't that doesn't save you from the the way that the Knicks are going to be crashing our offensive glass. 
confidence isn't going to make Buddy Hill remember, I got to box Josh Harder every time the shot goes up. You know, confidence is not going to make any of those guys remember, I got to I gotta box out Josh Hart because Joel's already at a disadvantage with the, with the sore knee, being out of shape. He's at a disadvantage down there with Hartenstein and Mitchell Robinson because they're going after the offensive glass. Josh Hart's going to be coming after the offensive glass. OG Ananobi's going to be coming after the offensive glass. I, things like that win games. Giving up eight offensive rebounds in the game, that could, that'll do you. That's especially the in the game. That's you, the you know, in the game right that, there. that'll do it right there. And that, yep. that advantage is something that's real. That's not something I'm, I'm – that's not hypothetical. That's not something I'm just make-believing. That's going to be there. We know Josh Hart is coming after that, that on that glass. And that's what Mitchell Robinson does. Joel Embiid is, is a little more out of shape than I thought he would be. I'm concerned after he kind of tweaked his knee a little bit. And I was the one saying, like, I think he should play. I want him to play. I'm I'm not I'm not mad at him for playing. I hope he's not re-injured himself. I hope it's just kind of just sore and he's out of shape. Got to keep playing himself in shape. But that's he don't got time. Chill. He he don't got time to get ready. And no, they're they're going to be all over him. Mars once again said they got the best coach in the in the series. I'm 100 against that. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not sold on Nick Nurse. Tibbs Tibbs is gonna Tibbs knows what he's doing. This is not gonna be what what. I don't understand how y'all could even think that the Sixers can win this series. Well, I, I go, I go the Knicks, and I think the rebounding is a is a great point. The Knicks are like the best offensive rebounding team in the league, and if Mitch Robinson can give you 18, 20 minutes a game, I think that's about like where he's been since he's come back. He can give you that. He might be like other than Stephen Adams, who's been hurt. He's like the best offensive rebounder in the league, so that's great value. And also, if Jalen Brunson isn't efficient, you having guys who can get offensive rebounds you can live with the inefficiencies then because you're still getting the extra shots. It's kind of like, um, and, and people know how I feel about him, it's kind of like Moses Malone. Moses Malone's teammates were able to take more jumpers and more shots because they had that guy down there who was able to clean it up even if they missed. You have someone who's who's able to just clean up your misses. I mean, it doesn't matter what you shoot from the field if you're getting 15 more shots a game. Like, you can, you can shoot worse from the field. If you're getting 15, 20 more shots because you don't turn the ball over and you get every offensive rebound, it's kind of hard to make up for that disparity. Like you'd have to be crazy efficient um, offensively. So that that's a way that the, the Knicks can for sure win. And I think they're gonna kill Philly on the glass. Philly Ox, already on a great rebounding team, and that's with Embiid healthy. Ox, did you know that Josh Hart? I just found this out. Josh Hart averages 14 rebounds against Philly. This season. Yeah, Philly are a bad rebound. Like that, even when Embiid's healthy, then just right. him alone. I ain't talking about the rest of the crew, just Josh Damn. Hart alone. He averages 14 boards against Do you know him. how many of those are offensive? Five of them per game. He, he, he's gotten. Oh, come on, man. That's I that mean, can that can change the series. I'm, I'm sorry, three, just just him. Three three, three offensive oh, okay. three oh, offensive yeah. rebounds on average right. per game. He had he had but, a game of 19 rebounds, 11, 12, and 15. They were three and one in those games. Um, that's yeah. the difference in the game, Oz. And that's, that's the I'm, difference in the game. Him him averaging. Well, how, I'm he sure was, he he was, those games his, that Joel playing. I'm uh, sure that if I look at this, I want to say oh, the, two. I want oh, to the, the first of all, Ron, the one that the one that Joel Embiid played him before he got hurt. The Knicks went to Philly with Julius Randle playing terrible, and they smoked them. They won by they won by two hundred and ten. They and smoked. Jo and them. Josh Hart was a, and Josh Hart was a plus forty six. Yes, they went into Philly and smoked them. Yes, they did. So I mean, a guy averaging fourteen rebounds. My goodness, That's on insane. a perimeter. That's insane right now for a big man. Too. Right, right, right now, Ox. They are in. They're in their coaches' meetings, and at the top of that list, what are we going to do about Josh Hart? Forget Joel Embiid, right? Forget or oh, forget Jalen Brunson, forget OG Ananobi. Their, their first order of business. What are we going to do about Josh Hart? And the fact the fact that the answer is Nick Batum is is really guards are really on crazy. It's not Nick Batum. No, it's, it's Kelly Uber. Uber. Yeah, it's Kelly Uber. But guards are Uber. Who, who, who we have not about spoke Kelly. about, by the way. That's right. I, I know. I know. I said Tobias Harris. I meant to say Kelly Uber. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, 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 that's what I really yeah, meant to say. I still. They're still our match. I love Kelly. I love <laughs> Kelly. But it's still like still still OG. It's still Josh. It's still Mitch. Joel's Joel's down. Joel's down. And that's I'm I'm saying this um chill because I'm thinking I'm I'm trying to put on a coach's hat like uh, from a coach's standpoint. You I'm looking at place places like okay um. Transition points. Let's get some. Uh, if if I can win, if I can win the transition game, if I can get 
five, six, seven offensive rebounds, if I can score in out-of-bounds plays without having to run any offense quick hitters, if I can win those margins by four to six points each game, that adds up to anywhere from 12 to 16 points. Mm. You know what I mean? So those, I'm, if I can get leads in just those little aspects of the game, I'm giving myself such an advantage. If if uh, New York can do that to Philly and still apply, apply that type of intense defense, I don't see how they can compete. Uh, Kelly Oubre, yeah, Ryan, this is not enough, bro. They need, they need Joel, Joel. Joel's not yeah, himself. That, that, they need the real Joel right now. I, I disagree, man. I think, I think we sleep on how good this Philly team really is. The I, reason I, why I, they I, are I, as good as they are, Ron, is because of Joel and B being Joel and B. Got, That's the, why the Knicks have better, or the the Sixers have better pieces than the Knicks. Sure, so, sure. Right. The Knicks, the Knicks play better defense, mm -hmm. and Tom Thibodeau knows what he knows. What, that's the perfect type of Tom Thibodeau crew. But yep. all in all, the Knicks aren't as good as the Sixers, talent wise. And on top of that, this Sixers point. team plays good defense, and they have a better coach too. And they have the Who has a better coach. I agree with the coach. I agree with that. <laughs> I don't know. Is it's Nick, mm. Maza, are, 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 are you sure Nick Nurse is a better coach than, than Tibbs? I'm comfortable. But I'm, I guess I'm higher on Nick Nurse than most people. I think he's and the reason I, I, I think Nick Nurse is a great coach. I'm thinking about Tibbs with the guys that he has, and this, this is what Tom Thibodeau, Thibodeau wants to well, do. Yeah, but that, 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 that's, that's Tibbs' guys. These are guys who can play. That's, what, that's the point that I'm making. That, 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 like, yeah, that's just him. So he doesn't need superstars. He needs guys who are going to play intense defense, who right. can play for two, two, two hours straight, and who are going to not give up on any players' hustle. And they just knock down shots when when they're needed. Like that's what right. he is. And bigs who are capable of running dribble handoff with Jalen Brunson. That's what right. he is. He just built. He just built the twenty eleven Bulls. Basically, Jalen Brunson. Basically. Is there that's what he's just done. He's just built the twenty eleven Bulls, and yeah. that was a very good team for a reason. Also, to another guy that we haven't brought up, who I who can steal a game in this series. Ach, you brought him up, Buddy Hill. Oh, Buddy Hill, but. Buddy, if Buddy Hill gets hot, which he will get hot over a course of six games, Buddy Hill's gonna have a game where he hits what we doing, six threes. That's what we're doing now, Ox. We're talking about Buddy okay. Hill now. So what about, so what, so what about, what about, about DiVincenzo? So what about DiVincenzo? See, I love I love stealing games. Role players steal games, they have to. That's that's yeah. I mean, but you just did it. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a part of the playoffs. Role players yeah. have to steal games. You are 100 percent correct. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't expecting you to go to go to Buddy with it. Yeah, Buddy Hill, the best shooter in the series. I'm okay. Uh, hey, Orlando, Dante DiVincenzo was third oh, in the league. Oh, forget about Bojan. See, yeah, I could have been saying. I, I did say Bojan. I said Bojan so many times. That's why I'm on the next screen. Because of Bojan. Bojan's going to play like 12 minutes a game. A mean 12 minutes. Hey, Tom Thibodeau gets his head out his ass and ups Bojan's minutes to 20 minutes a game. I feel a little less confident. But that's that's what I was saying. Because now Jalen Brunson has that secondary score. He only get hunting for twenty minutes, but don't take even Chenzo was second in the league and made third in the league and made threes. Oh, I don't know. I mean, if Buddy can get hot, what can Dante do? We know Dante can. Yeah. That's true. Shot forty percent too, so it's not on some low volume. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, I can't, I can't believe we're doing right it again. I'm, I'm, I'm tight that Chilltown just left, it, left because he usually, he usually helps in these situations when we talk about this, Ron. Why are you letting the Sixers do this to you again? You letting Joel, you've been letting Joel and B do this to you since the beginning of the process, but you That's gotta wrong. let. I don't know why go, you keep right? leaving them. You they have, have, they just let have a better go, team. Oh, Joel's the best player. They have a better coach. It, it's just I can't, I can't ignore bro, these I obvious just facts. Go, I just can't. I can't ignore these obvious facts. On top of that, the thing about it is, like, even how I was saying earlier, even with Joel at seventy percent, he doesn't have to carry as much as Jalen Brunson has to. You keep saying that, and I don't know why you keep saying that. Because he has to carry. <laughs> like, <laughs> unless he plays Bojan, Jalen Brunson got to – he got to do everything for them on the offensive end. Man. He got to be better than Luka. Luka's he is better than Luka. Be All right, chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. But, All right, man, it's about that time to get to these super chats, man. Okay, finally, W host. They got game said – Curious to hear from Mars what Nick Nurse has for Jalen Brunson. Oh, I, I alluded to it a little bit with just some of those. What was it that Steph called it? 
janky defenses, those, those type of things. Just, <laughs> just throwing, throwing defenses you haven't seen since you were in high school or college at you. Um, making guys um, who you probably aren't comfortable with making decisions, make some decisions. Um, just forcing Jalen. I know Jalen Brunson is probably one of the best in the league at playing off his pivot and without a dribble. But you wanted to pick up his dribble. Um, obviously, crowd him near the baselines and those type of things. Crowd him near the sideline. Um, don't want to give him the middle of the floor. Um, and then you mix that in with some of the craziest zones of a, outside of Spo that the conference probably has to offer. It's just gonna be, it's just gonna be hard for it's gonna be difficult for Jalen Brunson to um, navigate all the different coverages Nick Nurse is gonna throw at him over the course of a series. Um, that, that's just what I'm I guess I'm alluding to. All right, I got a super chat from Justo11. He said, chill. Last year, I told you, Knicks in five. This year, Knicks in four. And Bede just looks like an F-150 <laughs> with two pop tires. Dante defense on Maxi will be key, too. Also, can we have a debate for Brunson first team, please? What, over Jason Tatum? Hmm. If he got it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't. Hey, I, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't hurt me if I if I found out that Jalen Brunson was first team All NBA this year from what everything that he's done. That would not no, bother if he, me. If he, if he makes it over Jokic, right. Luke, and Shea, or Giannis, now that's something him. different. That's, but, that's 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 something different. But yeah, I don't, I'm fine with that. Riddell said we are going to act like the Raptors didn't make the 76ers struggle a few years ago in the playoffs with a fair with a far inferior team in terms of talent. He talking about the 22 Raptors. 21. That, that, 21 is yeah, 21? 21 yeah wow uh, whatever yeah i remember joel made a game winner and that's was that a game winner or was that a game time short One i think them. it was a game winner i mean it made a game winner in that series um had a broken face and a, and a messed up right. thumb but yeah i mean nick nurse nick, uh, nick nurse is like an elite coach i think the reason and that's why i don't i don't judge these coaches on their rings i don't i'm not holding it against doc rivers that he has one championship i don't i don't really care it's nick nurse what he's able to do in terms of schematics and adjustments and uh, maximizing his personnel is what I think is very impressive to me. Um, that Raptors team post 2019 just had no shot of winning the championship in 2020. They were like, um, they lost to Boston. And yeah. I remember um, in the semifinals. Yeah. Like they, they lost to Boston who were a better team, but they gave Boston everything they could handle. They went game seven. That series was nip and tuck. Like that's a tough series. Um, the next year, the next is the year they missed the playoffs, right? Because they weren't even yeah. playing in Toronto, they were playing in Orlando. It's that that wasn't a yeah, that, that was that was a, oh yeah, Florida, my fault. Um, that wasn't a that wasn't a great year, but then 22 they come back and once again they're not like the most talented team. Didn't they beat Toronto in five games or something like that? Didn't they beat them in like five games? Who, who? Philly. Philly in 22. Yeah, yeah didn't they I want to say six. That was the game. That was that, that was when 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 Joel and B broke his face. I want to say it was six, but I can't remember off the top of my head. It might have been five. But, like, the team just hasn't been able to stack up <coughs> talent-wise right. with these teams in the NBA. Like, that was, like, all-star Fred Van Vliet. Yeah. Like, shout-out to Fred, but, like, that, that's what he's really dealing with in terms of I'm Ricky Scotty Barnes and all he of that. He got outplayed by Maxi in that series, too, by the way. It's just, it's just difficult. It's just difficult to really win a championship when your talent isn't on the level. But I think he's doing a great job himself, mm -hmm. and I think he's done an excellent job with Philly. And they would have been the number two seed if Embiid healthy the whole year. But what can you do? He's injury prone. Riddell followed that up and said, to add more context to my last super chat, it was a it was a six game series, and Nick Nurse was coaching circles around Doc Rivers in that series. Was he? Doc was doing goofy stuff like keeping <laughs> keeping Joel Embiid in the game when they're up twenty. That's like broke his face. Keeping Joel Embiid in the game when they're up 20 with like three minutes left. Like, why is Joel Embiid still on the floor? Man, that's how he broke his face. Chris Cold said, I don't get the hate for the playing from a fan's perspective. All we get is better basketball in March slash April when these games used to be meaningless. And these games are meaningless, Chris. If you go check the record books, they're not there. You can't. Uh, you, you yeah, can't I, I hear that all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you can't, these stats don't even count. Oh, you, yeah. you can't find any record of any of these games here. So no matter how good they are in terms of good basketball, ain't no record of them. So they're meaningless too. And I'm not talking about the playing from a fan's perspective. I don't like. I know I'm a fan of basketball, but like I don't, I don't like 
as respectfully as I don't care how the fans feel. I don't like I don't think the NBA should care how I feel about the playing. I understand the money aspect, but for the, the integrity of basketball, no team like the Hawks should have had a chance to make the playoffs this year. That's just for the inte- that's for making the game fair. That's why I, I'm I'm with Ox on the one through sixteen. I think that's the most fair way to do the playoffs. And you play every team three times. I think it's unfair that if you're in a weak division, you get to beat up on teams like the Pistons just because they're in your division. I think that's unfair too. Like I'm me, in my opinion, the perfect NBA is no conferences. You play every team three times. The top 16 teams make the playoffs. That's the perfect world for me. I don't care if the fans don't like it. I don't care if the players don't like it. If you want the best and most fair competition, everyone should have to play the same teams the same amount of times and you don't benefit from a weaker conference or weaker division. In my well, humble opinion. Well, first of all, Miles, we are yeah, in a we, we are we are in the business of money making. We, we, we're, we're, That's why we're I said in, I understand the play. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in the business of money making. Plus, you know, geographically, don't get me wrong, Miles. I understand that travel hasn't been what it is today, but geographically, there's a reason why we have divisions. Like we've created rivalries. We created rivalries between the Miami Heat and the New York Knicks. We've created rivalries between Indiana and the Milwaukee Bucks. We've created rivalries with the Atlanta Hawks and the Miami. We've created rivalries with the Lakers and the Clippers. We've created rivalries with Phoenix and Dallas. We've created rivalries like that. So if we take divisions away, if we take conferences away, now we're taking that away, which is putting eyes on on the television. So people can now watch this. But if that's not going on, where teams are also only playing each team three times, I mean, I, 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 I think that takes away from how important that stuff is. I think it was still there would still be rivalries too. It wouldn't it wouldn't be no it, it would open the door for more and even better rivalries. And especially since you play each team three, there's a clear winner. There's a clear yeah, obvious so we, we won the series. You know what I'm saying? Two one series. We're kicking y'all ass every time. You know what I'm That's, saying? That 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 drives rivalry. If I play you in my division and we split two two, it's just kind of like all right, well, we got at each other. I want to play you three times that way. You know. I'm better than you. I got you. I, I swept you three. Oh, I got you two one. That's why. Why? Why would? Why should we contain the the possibilities of better rivalries? We could have had. We could have had Kobe and Brown playing each other three times a year. We and we know now. You know what I mean? Like, it, I think that's that's better for rivalries. If you ask could've me, we've seen it in got, the playoffs. Yeah, we we could have got different rivalries. You know what I'm saying? Like, play teams that only play each other twice. That's that's just how I feel about it. Like, it, well, it's, it opens the up group the group doors. Was- was the best two teams in the NBA Finals that year in 2009? I don't, I don't know. Well, no, I mean, Orlando and uh, and the I mean, if if, K, if KG's not hurt, I think Boston are a better team. But I mean, based on health and everything, I think basically from from what was going on that that year, okay, considering everything, were the best two teams in the NBA Finals that year. I think it probably should have been the Cavs. If I'm honest, I think it probably should have been the Cavs. Mm. But I understand why they didn't win. They just didn't have a matchup for Dwight. Their front court just wasn't good enough. But I think it probably should have been the Cavs. And the people asking about like travel and stuff, like the America is a very big country. I'm I'm aware. It took me five hours to fly across the country to get to Seattle. It took me five hours to get to America, and then it took me five hours to get from when we got to. I think we we went over Florida from Florida to to see how that was the half the flight was just getting across the country i understand that but like if you first of all if you're playing teams three times a year it doesn't mean you go play orlando one night and then you're playing the blazers the next night it will just be like mini series over the season so like Mm -hmm. if you're miami you'll play a game in orlando and then you might go see the knicks like on your little road trip the local road trip then you go back you go back you go back home and then you might go on your little west coast trip and then you start playing teams on the west you're not going to go Oh, New York, Portland, back back to back to Miami, and then you're going all the way back to the Kings. Like you're not gonna right. do all of that. Like they would just make the schedules easier on you in terms of the travel. They're just trying to minimize the travel. Travel's not place. an issue. Tra- travel's not an issue for this for this. And plus it's it's crazy that the 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 Warriors had to get sent home when you got these players, these teams in the East with worse records. So we, they gotta even it out. My and then thing about also, the rivalry too. But but real quick, Ron, that would that will stop people from having that that narrative. Oh, the East was weak. You know what I mean? Like that would that would stop that would stop the tainting of people's legacies. People saying, well, they ran through a weak East. Well, if they had to play every time, everybody three times, they they couldn't use that they couldn't use that excuse anymore. Uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, my, my my only thing about the rivalries, chill, especially these team rivalries. What happens when a team just sucks? So they, they 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 were trying to force a bunch of Knicks rivalries before the Knicks was good. Knicks and Lakers still, Knicks and Celtics, <laughs> things like that. What about when Philly sucks? 
Philly now now Philly and Boston can't be a rivalry. What about when Jalen when when Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum all of a sudden they they fall off ten years from now? Now what Celtics rivalry can you force? You can't force the Lakers in the Celtics rivalry. They'll still try to force it force it for us, but on Christmas nobody wants to watch that. We gonna turn that game off when when both of them when when both of them teams are bad or if one of the teams are bad. For instance, like when the like for for NFL when they were putting the Detroit Lions on every single Thanksgiving. It's like don't nobody want to watch this. The Redskins. I understand, like, okay, you got you got the you got the Redskins and the Cowboys. All right. But when both of those teams are weak, we don't want to watch this on Thanksgiving. Now, when they're good, different story. But when they're not, okay. That's why I like player rivalries more so, anyways. Even if it is, you could say it's a forced player rivalry. Remember, I asked you guys earlier, is Joel Embiid and Jokic a rivalry? They might not, you guys might not necessarily see it as a rivalry. But when they play, we all want to watch it because it's two of the best bigs in the NBA, and that and that's what you'll more so get uh, with the one through sixteen. You're you're gonna get it. It might not be a rivalry, but you're gonna get two of the top sixteen teams, and more more like more than likely, you're gonna get two players that are all star level players, possibly superstars that duke it out against each other too. All right, we got another super chat from Sorcerer. He said, you cook LeBron and KD for losing with the most talent, but Cock Rivers, hmm, is cool watching other cultures adjust while he does nothing. Shout out Mellow and B-Mill. That was about ticket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stunner said, ticket ain't the final boss. He's Vince McMahon. I know y'all seen what's happening with Vince right now. I haven't. Oh, me neither. I have not. I don't either. Jay Clip said a lifetime ban is justified, but in no way should his actions be a reflection of his brothers. I just think that, you know, to Maz's point, it's kind of hypocritical. You know, you can't advertise tricking and then put me in handcuffs because you find me with a hop when you find me with a hoe. You can't do that. No. Uh, I got a super chat from 97 Till. He's been a member for nine months, so shout out to 97 Till. He said they just mad because Jonte was making smart bets. No, they mad because it was compromising the integrity of the game. Even though they're hypocrites, it still was compromising the integrity of the game. So no, we can't have that. Laflame said the comedian guy game on the panel talking about how bad players gambling is, and the very next day Porter gets busted. Oh yeah, I remember. That. I can't remember his name. I remember that guy. Yeah. That was crazy though. To to to, to Ox's point, that was that was B Diddy, right? Yeah. To to, to Ox's point, mm -hmm. there's no way. Well, not, I'm not gonna say there's no way because it's obvious that it happened. But I want to know what your thought process is. Like, how long do you think we can do this? Because there's no way that me and Ox come up with this plan where Ox, a hey, Ox, I got the inside information on a game, and I'm gonna put you're gonna put sixty stacks on it, and we're gonna end up coming up with 500,000. How long do you think we can do that before somebody smokes us out? We ain't going to be able to do that long. Can't hear you. Your, your mic is your mic is muted. Chill. I know a lot of stupid people. <laughs> you know? And so I know people really are living like that, like really thinking stuff like, oh, I could do this. Like, bro, you you can't do that. Like, I see. And get away with it. You could do it, but you're right, not right. getting away with it. You're not. SMN R and DM said, Sup, sup, old man, playing is here. Sup, old man, playing is here. Feels so good. I have to say, and B don't look 100%. Mars still got them to come out of the east? Question mark. No, 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 no. Uh, Boston got it. Boston got it. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate, but yeah, Boston, Boston coming out of the east. Justo11 said, You skipped my super chat, Ron. L host. Also, what's your dark horse team to win it all? What player legacy takes the biggest raise from winning it now? Russell Westbrook. <laughs> I'm saying it right now. Russell Westbrook. With his with Russell Westbrook's resume, if the Clippers were to win the NBA championship and you add a championship to Russell Westbrook, who is not just sitting on a bench with the Clippers, by the way. He's an integral part of what they're doing. He's arguably the best rotation guard in the game. So if Russ, you talk about a nine-time All-Pro. By the time he retires, he's going to be a member of the 25,000 point, 10,000 assist club, possibly. And you want to add a championship to that? 
on a Clipper team on the Clippers, not with the Lakers, not with the Knicks, not with the Celtics, but with the Clippers. Yeah. I think yeah. there's something so are, are, the, are the Clippers your dark horse and Russ? It's the same that's the answer for both. No, because I don't think the Clippers are gonna win it. Yeah, I was about to say I know no. Chill's not. I know I know Chill's <laughs> not going with the Clippers. No, because I don't think they're gonna win it. Who, is, it no, is it is it not Embiid's like Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Chill, who's your dark horse team? My dark horse team this year, the Knicks. Okay. Mars, you were about to say something about Embiid? Yeah, is it not Embiid's legacy that takes the biggest boost? If he, like, it's kind of similar to Giannis in terms of, oh, this guy can't get it done in the playoffs, blah, blah, blah. And then they win. I mean, he's kind of going to get that get that monkey off his back. Kind of like Dirk as well, in a sense. Um, I mm. think Embiid's legacy takes the biggest burn. It's him or, like, Kevin Durant. And if Kevin Durant can win without the Warriors and mm. seeing how the Warriors have kind of fell apart, or Jimmy Butler, though. More than more than James Harden. I just don't. I don't. I don't know how much a like. If you want, for people who do legacy talk, I don't know how much a ring as the third best player on the team really boosts legacies for people. Yeah. How much that's what I was going to say about Westbrook's too. Legacy, like it. It's but, a little but, different here when you're the number one option and you like. For instance, so a guy I was going to say is Luca. If Luca gets a ring mm, right now mm, in his yeah, prime, sure. well, I don't, we don't even know if Luca's winning MVP. Yet, but they win in, this he, he, you know, at, at the peak of his game, young in his career, and we know he carried, we know he had a substantial amount of impact on this ring. Then that's a little different. Like, and, and I'm not, I, I want Russ to get a ring, but it's just not going to hit the same as if he would have did it with the Thunder and you know he triple doubled his way all the way to a ring because then not only would we talk about the ring. But we would talk about the way that he impacted getting the ring. Right. We would talk about how he carried, how he did. Oh, and, well, in game six, Russ did this, this, and this, and he had a game winning, yada, yada, yada. Or he scored 20 points in the fourth quarter and overcame X, Y, and Z. It's a little different when you're coming off the bench and Kawhi Leonard wins it, finals it, MVP and all of that. That that's the other thing, Ron. We 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 haven't taken into account how Russ plays in the in the series. That's number that's one. True. Number that's number two, we talking about right now. I'm thinking, like Ma said, in terms of legacy talk. I'm thinking 15, 20 years from now, what kind of conversation are we having about these dudes? What kind of conversation am I going to have to listen to about how Russell Westbrook was integral in them winning the NBA championship? What kind of conversation am I going to have to hear from fans talking about Joel Embiid coming off of injury, won the NBA championship? Or the fact that Luka went almost 35, 10 and 10 and 10, and they won the NBA championship 15 years from now. What kind of conversation are... What kind of conversation is there going to be? And if you look at Russell Westbrook's resume, which is what people are going to look at 15 years from now, and the fact that, I don't know, let's say he was awesome in the finals where he played 20, 25 minutes and gave them 10, 12 points and six, seven assists, and they won it. Yeah. And you add that to what he already did, I think that that's going to be a huge deal. We're not going to be talking about him yeah. the same way 15 years from now as we talk about him today. We're not. The obvious answer for whose legacy will boost the most is LeBron James. Like if LeBron, yeah. if LeBron, if LeBron got a yeah. ring right now, like in this situation, coming out the play in, how much is it the is it, is it most the people, people have in the top three? Like, he's yeah, but he's, he's, but it's not, it won't be a conversation for it. will go so overboard now. If Bron yeah. won right now, do y'all know what Lakers fans and LeBron James how cra y'all know how LeBron fans are already? So but they he, already he, call him the good. No, I like, understand I that, Mars. What no I'm saying is it will go way right overboard. It's 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 not it's not even about the goat. I, I it's, agree, about, it's about Mars. it's it, about how it much it to of a the whole goat nother is. The LeBron, the LeBron like, fans, are, like the, those guys, will become God. unbearable. But like the like the people who have like for the most part, like there's mm. outliers. Eighty five percent of the people who have Jordan as the goat. Are not going to change their minds about LeBron. They, I they think they do it, with one more they, ring. They put it to the point where when 2011 happened, LeBron was excluded. He can't be the goat. So right. even if LeBron wins this year, he's still not going to be the goat for them. And the Mars, people who so, already so, have LeBron as the goat, all this is going to do just make them unbearable to have to listen to. Right, but, but it's, 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 not, like it's, not, it's not even about it's, it's not even about the changing of minds necessarily. It's about how violent the argument gets now. <laughs> like, like imagine imagine LeBron fans hearing Jordan fans say that this ring means nothing. But that that I'm I'm not gonna be able to sit through any of those arguments. 
It might be the Israelis and the Palestinians at that yeah, point. Yeah, but that might be ugly. Be, you, not, might, you, you might not be wrong about that. But Ron, I'm in. I'm I'm, 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 I'm in the minority because I was a J guy and I came over to the James side. There aren't many people who are doing that, right? But most but chill. That's what I'm saying. Though. I might possibly be able to be swayed if Braun gets if Braun does this that like beat the Nuggets and then I don't you know what have to around. <laughs> Ooh, I am. Bro, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to logically rethink what's going on. Yo, Bron gets one this year. Think about, year Ron. 21. Think about, Ron. You, you see what I'm saying? Look, this is me and Ox talking right now. Y'all know how we feel about LeBron. We, we show LeBron a lot of love, but I got four players over so LeBron what, right so now. Where, so where if Kawhi gets six. it done? Where, where if Kawhi gets it done? And that's another <laughs> one. Woo! <laughs> no, I, I another hear the one. thing. I hear the thing. LeBron fans bring up oh, three finals MVPs on three different teams. Kawhi will be yeah. the second player to do that. Yeah. Well, hey, I'll, I'll, hey, probably, I'll probably be on there, but you, you probably don't want to talk to me about basketball no more if Kawhi gets finals MVP this year and yeah. wins the championship with the Clippers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So okay. So let, let's let's go like completely out of left field. Uh oh. Where Paolo? Where Paolo does it? Right, that's, dope. that's dope for the young fella. That was a hell of a year, run. year two. Like that like, was a hell of a run. We're just throwing things out there. If Orlando get a ring and Paolo just goes crazy and wins a championship, are we like? What's his projection? Like, what he, he's, he's, he, he's on his way to being Tim Duncan. He's no, he's no, he's not in the goat conversation. But it'd be great though. It'd be dope. But he wouldn't be in the goat conversation. I mean, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and like, everyone else. It took. Three. Well, I was, I wasn't I'm, there for that. I wasn't there it, for that. And I've seen that already, so it's not as, it's not as impressive. If it happens again, like you know what I mean, Morris. If, if he pulls this off, Paolo, this year, I'm expecting to see this again, at least another time. Oh, or come so on, now, what the now? hell? <laughs> Yo, if, he, if he gets, if he gets through the gauntlet this year, Facts. as a what? What is he? 22 years old? Okay, well, yeah, 21. He, 21. 21. All right. Well, I'm, I'm at at bare minimum. He got 10 more years. To get a to get ten more shots at the crown, that's he got, he got, he got to finish. That's the is, that, is, that, is that the same thing? If, is that the same thing that Anthony Edwards does it? Look, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he's so young. You expect him now. It's like, okay, you've shown us you could do it. I expect you to yeah, probably if, do it. If Ant wins, he's the face of the league. He's the face of the league. Yeah. If Anthony, yeah. If Anthony yeah. Edwards wins the NBA championship and wins the Finals MVP in Minnesota, one. They getting him out of Minnesota. That's number one because he got to go somewhere where there's a bigger deal. Number two, yeah, they, he's not, sure. num number two, he's the face of the league now. That's the American that we've been waiting for. That's the guy. Oh, another mm -hmm. one out of left field. What if Yanis just doesn't come back and Dame carries the Bucks to him? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mars, go on. You didn't go too far, Mars. You didn't go too far. Mars, you didn't too far. If Yanis' is car strain is, is, is too I'm severe, telling you, Mars, and he doesn't hey, come Mars. back and Dame just gets them to the finals. I'm on telling you, Mars, he's a top five point guard all time. That's Mars, gonna be good, the some good he's still Bay Area. That's going to be the logic, Mars. instead of Bay Area, Kimba... No, he's not no more. Bay no, Area no, Steph Curry. No, he's not. No, Bay Area no Steph Curry, man. Let's go. He's a top hey, five point guard of all time. That's that's gonna be the logical. Would that, would that help James' legacy more or hurt Giannis' legacy? Both. It would so help. It, 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 it doesn't hurt Giannis' no. legacy because Giannis he already won. No, because Giannis already won without him, all so that doesn't work. It would yeah, definitely. He, he just help wasn't James able to play. Yeah, it, it, it would How definitely it, help James' legacy. It, it would hurt Giannis' legacy if they come back next year and they get swept in the first round or something like that. But this is this is first year playing with Dan. Win without Giannis, that doesn't hurt him. In, no, in because, he, because, because he because because he won without you guys, without you guys on, on the side of Twitter. I'm on. I'm promise you, Giannis' legacy will get destroyed if that happens. How though? He won without Dane. Run and dunk, man. Yes, with his team's winning a ring without him. Who and 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 he 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 has an elite player on the team. What but he team, also what won. Team, what team has had an all-time great player? He goes down for the whole playoffs and they win the ring without him. When has that ever happened? That's never happened. And that's why the conversation is ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> the way it goes. Not, it's not it's but yo, uh, my you know, so my my dark dark horse um to winning the championship, obviously, is Finals MVP Keegan Murray. You know what I mean? that's, my, that's my that's my dog. Oh, oh I'm not the Montezuma Burn champion. Because look, I mean, we we get that AC. As you know, this is the way we do. It. We get the AC. We knock off OKC. Um, and then then the who, who was it? The Suns. Clippers, Mavs. Clippers, Mavs. Clippers, Mavs. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah, we take care of anything. Packing on Kawhi. Packing we're back. We're, we're begging. We I, honestly tell you the truth. We kind of want the Clippers. Um. And then you mm -hmm. won the Lakers in the conference finals, right? Of course, of course. Yeah. That's that's how that's the cherry on top. Wait, 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 what if Kobe White does it? 
the moderation. <laughs> all right, all right. It, you know what's crazy right, though? We right. did this whole thing and nobody mentioned Shay. I, yeah, I, I was really, gonna ask about Shay. I was gonna this really that. kicks off Shay's two 30 point per game uh seasons. It doesn't the number one overall seed. It doesn't benefit him more than Luca or Jason so, Tatum. Shay? No, it doesn't. What? Or Jason okay, Tatum. We, it does we, not. we talk about Shay a little different. Well, well he just got well, a whole lot. This, this is the first year when we're talking about Shay in terms of expectations in the playoffs. He doesn't have that history. Like Jason Tatum does, or Luca does, or any of those other guys do. So if he were to win it, I don't think that it would affect him like it would Luca, or like it would a guy like Jason Tatum. It, it wouldn't affect those guys. What? But how will it? Oh, Jason Tatum could if any team other than Boston wins this year. Just so you guys yeah, he's, know, he's definitely he's cooked. Cooked. like Boston definitely. have to win. If they don't win, he's just getting cooked. Like, well, he's in a he's he's in a he's in a tough situation because if they win it. They only won it because he was on a bomb squad. If you yeah. lose, you choke. So he's it's, he's, a, it's, a, it's a losing. So what, what, happens, what, happens to, what happens to SGA when they lose in the first round? Just no big Young game. team. He, Young he's team, he's playing my house money right now. He's playing my right. house money right now. That's what I, thought. I expect yeah. OKC to win the first round, but he playing my house money for the legacy people. Mm. SMN R and DM said, haven't seen the show in two days. Itching for some super chats. Is Warriors big three done? Gut feeling? Bulls over heat? The Warriors have a big three? Yeah, <laughs> Steph Clay Steph and Dre. Draymond and Kaminga, big three. Yeah. Steph Clay and Dre. Clay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's still. I mean, he's still there. So on paper, that's, that's the case. Their big the Pistons have a big three: K. Jalen Durant and Saul Thompson. That's their big three. They might be garbage. That doesn't mean that to, to Mars. To your point, and the way you, the way you logically think, it might not be winning. But this is our big three. So what's over here, yo? They they the highest paid on the team. That's about it. Big three. I don't yes. Know. Bulls over here? Yeah, I think so. Bulls over right. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I, I go Miami. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going. Uh, I go Miami. I want. I want to see the Bulls win. To be honest, I want. Right, why not? Make the play in at least mean something. Let the nine seed get in the play. They should. They, they should not be in. They should not be in this. But the fact that they are, and the fact that Jimmy went down the way he did, yeah. And they beat them. They they, they played four times this year. They split two two with them. So now buckets isn't playing. Kobe White's coming off a forty two point game. Shout out Kobe White. So, Justin, Justin said, "Sir, go ahead." No, I was just I, someone asked even with Jimmy out. I just said, "Yeah, even even without Jimmy, yeah, I got them." Justin said, "How do I get to an All Star membership so I can watch the playback shows on YouTube?" It says I'm a rookie. Well, Justin, when you click that little button that says "Join and become a member," upgrade from All Star to All the Fame. Oh. Yeah, join the join join the Hall of Fame tier. Shout out to all of our Hall of Fame members. Shout it's real simple, you. Justin. Just do that. Uh, Brian Holiday said, "Mars, what is your feeling on Arsenal right now? Five years, seven hundred million dollars spent, and one trophy with players he didn't buy. I think Arteta's Ar Arteta's time is up. How you say his name? Arteta. We stink. There we go. We stink. Okay. Garbage. Trash." Garbage. Get him out. Can you, throw, can you throw away two trophies in the space of three days? Like, what? <laughs> what think? Get Arsenal. Isaiah Davis said, "What's the core difference between Embiid and AD's game when talking about players with similar builds?" There's a few different. AD, AD, um, Embiid's better face-up game. AD has way more versatility defensively. Mm -hmm. um, Embiid's probably a better passer too. AD's a better rebounder. AD's better around the rim. AD's a better lob threat. AD's just more athletic. I don't really think they're that similar, to be honest. I, I don't, don't either. I don't think they are at all. And they don't have a similar build, neither. Yeah, yeah I don't think they're that similar. They're, they're just different players. Anthony Davis is better in transition. He's a better rim protector. Um, I think I, I think Joel Embiid's a better one-on-one -on -one player. I won't argue that. Hot take. I think AD, like, at his best, is better than Embiid. Like, AD, like, a couple years ago. Like, 2020. Like, peak for peak? Yeah, I think. Bro, we've been talking about and we've been talking about Anthony Davis like he was just good. Like I mean, he's an all time, all time. Special. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's a hot take. He know. was awesome. Tell me if it's a bad take, but I got AD. Polar Bear said the Knicks are a little more creative than the Mavs with how they get Jay Hart with with how Jay Hart gets the ball to JB. It isn't just high pick and roll then ISO with the Knicks. No, it is not. 
Yeah, yeah it, no, it, it's it's different, but that's that's Tibbo. That's his. He loves his. He loves his dribble handoffs, his misdirections. Right. Like Jalen Brunson is Jalen Brunson is gonna get the ball on every possession, but he's doing work like in order to get the ball in advantageous positions. Luca's bringing the ball up the court, and then you're setting up your offense. But Jalen Brunson, will, he'll bring the ball up, and then he'll swing it to the other side. Then you'll get some action from to come off, get a player on his hip, and he's getting downhill. Those things are different. But my my point was just more about that. Um, in terms of how much they have to do for their offense is similar and they have the ball in their hands a similar amount but they do do it in different ways i'm not i didn't mean to say it that way that's how it came across uh i ran the poll i said who benefits the most from winning a ring this year um 31 is kd 30 percent is lebron 29 percent is westbrook and Kawhi's only 10 percent westbrook's about Kawhi. yeah the guy i guess it does move the needle chill <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, also, shout out to our, a couple of our members. I got Funny Muffler 202 became a member today. Mr. Sauce Man <laughs> Uno Dos Tres became a member. And also, the Pool 2014 became a member. Shout out to our members. I also got a members chat from my man Green. He's been a member for a month. He said, higher expectations this postseason, KD or Luca? Luca. It's the best team that he's been on since he's been in the league. KD already won it. Even however the fashion you want to criticize him about, he still did his job and he still won it. Luca, on the other hand, this is the he's had an MVP season. This is the best talent that he's had. On top of all of that, he's got a favorable matchup in the first round. So the fact that KD already won it, I think Luca, I think more of it is on Luca than it is on KD. You guys agree? I don't know. Yeah, I, do. I really don't know. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm running a poll right now asking you guys who has higher expectations, Luca or KD. Y'all make sure to get over there, vote on that poll, hit the like button on the way to doing that, and also scan the QR code too and check out some of our merch on playerschoicemerch.com. Also, we will be on playback this week. You can see the schedule right here. You could also see it on our social medias, too. So go follow our social medias if you haven't. But the most nearest show today is going to be Open Gym. They will be on playback right after the stream. But then also tomorrow, Friday, you see NBA X will be on, too. So y'all go to playback.tv. Join the Player's Choice Room. Check out these shows. And have a good time with us. Simple as that. A couple more Super Chats. SMN. R and DM said, "Chill. Luca didn't have a better team around when before the trade deadline, Kai was injured. You just praised Brunson for the exact thing you accused Luca of doing." No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I did not. Because the team was built different. So that's not the same thing. Luca's a Luca is a better offensive player than Jalen Brunson. And the fact that the team that he's on right now, and the and the better offensive players that he has now. Why does he have to do so much? That was always my logic. It's always been my logic. Mr. Rudy Pooh said, one thing the Knicks have over the 76ers is willing shooters. Brunson, DiVincenzo, Bojan, McBride, and OG. Dot, dot, dot. Philly has only Oubre, Batum, and Maxi. Who, by the way, Nick Batum made it clear. He said that 20-point game that you saw last night, don't expect that again. He said that. Um, he gave them enough. He got them in the playoffs. He gave them enough. <laughs> he said that. It's like, I mean, what buddy, you buddy, buddy Hill to shoot too. Buddy Hill to shoot. Right. It's about to say respect, Buddy Hill. He and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and Kyle Lowry, yeah. And B take jumpers. That's like, the Anthony Martin, if he come back. You forgetting mm. anyone? No. That's about it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, you know what? Ricky Collins with the ball, if he gets some PT in the play. <laughs> I, yo, I can't believe that guy. Number 12, I, I just can't. He just never ceases to amaze me. But we don't have time to on number 12. Yeah, my Bamba. Theoretical shooter. Mm-hmm. SMN, r and also said, so let's say Dallas and the Clippers have the same record. Isn't it unfair for two teams that played two home games or is it unfair? Isn't it unfair for two teams that play two home games? I think he's talking about the three, uh, each team playing each other three times. Is it hard to make the perfect system? 
Oh, yeah. So that's the, the, the easy <laughs> fix for that. One game at home, one game on the road, one game at a neutral venue. There you go. It just switches. It just switches every year. This yeah, year you got two I was, I that, that was that was gonna be my idea. Just one game. One year you'll play two at home and one on the road. Yeah. Next year, so like they, so like they do like earlier in the season where like we'll play in Mexico City or we'll play in London. That, 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 like that. that's if you want to ex- bring the NBA to different places. Like that that could yeah. work. But realistically, one then next season Dallas will play two games at home against the Clippers, and then the season after that. The Clippers will play two games at home against Dallas. That's the or, or or to your point, Mars, we can have a game in Kansas City. How about that? We'll have a game in Baltimore. I think that could work. I don't know if the I don't know if those cities have won that, but I think people the work. people will come out for them games. Yes, they would. That, yeah. that they for sure come out. Yes, they would. Why Especially depending people? on the magnitude of the game. Like let's say, mm-hmm. for instance, it's the Suns and the Lakers. They they selling out damn near every city. Mm-hmm. If them in R and DM with another super chat, he said, "Oh man, how how is the Clippers' favorable matchup? Stop sleeping on the Clippers, Kawhi, PG, James Harden, Westbrook, and the rest. This team should win the chip." He's so scared of the Clippers. He is terrified of these dudes, Mars. <laughs> is he not? He's yeah, he's so scared. What is the deal? He should be. Ever since he found out Dallas, <laughs> Dallas have the Clippers, he's every super chat he sent damn near has been about why the Clippers are so so intimidating. Caleb Parker said, "Ticket the final boss, but Chill is the tribal chief." <laughs> He's Wallacum said, "Ticket, who are your current top five players in the NBA?" Well, ask him this tomorrow. Or uh, he's, I got you, I got you. Uh, Marcel crazy. Sanders said, "Ticket, thoughts on Paulo and Magic?" We'll talk about that tomorrow again. C K F said, "Tobias." Three point blank miss layups, Tobias, bro. I thought I thought Ron was going to jump through the screen last night. That was insane. I couldn't believe. <laughs> it. Oh, you was on playback when you seen that. Yeah, I that thought Ron was going to jump through the screen. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I was on edge that whole second half. That was Tobias crazy. Harris was battling Clay Thompson for the biggest criminals. What do you expect from Tobias? Oh, yeah, I expect. Nah, I, I, yeah, I've given up on Tobias a while ago. So, like, I'm not even shocked anymore when he's just sabotaging this. Team. T- Tobias, Tobias is the chick, Ron, that Ox been telling you about. Is whack. You still looking at her like she's something else, and he's still telling you. I told you that this chick is a bum chick, yo. No, chill. I've been told no, you that. that's that's the whole Sixers organization. I've been trying to tell him this for almost <laughs> forever. Sure, but, she, but the selfie she'd be posting be looking so good. It just be like like she get a couple lights on her too. She hit whack. that angle right, you know. Ox, like Ox, steady trying to tell you that yo, she is whack. I don't know what you see in this, bro. She's whack, yo. This <laughs> selfie game, <laughs> yo, here's <a> selfie game. <laughs> uh, Mr. Rudy Pooh said, "Buddy Hill, the pump faker." So is Tobias Jojo. Claw, Kyle Lowry. Kyle, uh, Kyle Lowry, they are not shooters, or they're not willing to. It's always Buddy pump fakes because teams actually try and run him off the line. Tobias pump fakes when no one's even closing out. I don't know what he does. <laughs> and he's six eight too. On top of that, I think he's like six ten. Chill. Yeah. Tobias, Tobias, a funny guy. Stam said, "Chill, chill." Win division has no. Has has not mattered in like ten years. Winning a division. That's not true. Not like I mean, the, the 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 Pacific Division. I think almost every team is in the postseason, with the exception of the Warriors missing the playoffs. How about uh-huh. this year? With the, how about with the with the Central Division? <laughs> um, I think the only team is Detroit. Detroit. Yep. That, that's that's the only team. Divisions matter, man. Yes, they do. Sam said rivalry in the NBA's don't hold weight like NFL and MLB. Mike said, Montrez Harrell don't know ball. He just watched clips. Right. Shout out Montrez yeah, Harrell. Comes. He talking about Ox, and it's the same dude who. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, that's I thought this was my actual talking. Montrez Harrell. I was Dang. like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm that's harsh. That's harsh, I'm straight, Mike. I'm straight, uh, I'm straight, SMN, I'm R&DM, I'm with the last me. super chat of the day, he said, it's called PTSD. Them Clippers got him oh, shook. Understandable, man. understandable. Them yeah. Clippers got him shook. They do. 100%. So, all right, y'all. We're going to be back tomorrow with the same crew as today. Uh, also, jump from here over to Playback TV and catch out Mars with his new found co host. Mm-hmm. Such a bad show. <laughs> <laughs> Mars is L Dub, Mars. Oh, always. W Dub. W Dub. L Dub. All right, y'all. We out. We're going to see you tomorrow. Y'all be easy. Later. No doubt. <laughs>